About 100 miles away from both New York and Philadelphia, the Poconos attract throngs from the Northeast to enjoy its many lakes and mountains. Only three weekends are left in the summer, so fun seekers have made the trek in an attempt to stretch the season. And today, 22 drivers have come here to Pocono Raceway for their own 500 mile drive. Four races left in their season and the road to the championship could face its toughest test today. Roger Penske has four drivers facing that challenge with two drivers looking to win their first title and two others trying to recapture past glory. And Penske knows a thing or two about Pocono. His first driver, Mark Donahue, won the first race here almost a half century ago in 1971. Penske's first win as an owner. 46 years and 193 IndyCar wins later, Penske now has another young American driver, Joseph Newgarden, leading the points for the first time in his career, four races away from a championship. But right behind him, three teammates, all within 52 points, each have their own reason to take the title away from Newgarden. There's only one driver in the field with multiple championship, and that's Scott Dixon. The four-time champ would love to break up the Penske's at the top. But today, they will all start behind Japan's Takuma Sato, this year's Indy 500 winner, and on the pole for today's 500-mile race. Welcome to IndyCar Live, presented by Verizon, where we set the stage for today's round 14 of 17 for the IndyCar Championship. And it could not be any better. Remember, last year, rained out, had to race on Monday. The two NASCAR races were rained out here last year, but it is excellent today. We've had a great day and a great weekend, and we are in victory lane. This is where every driver is trying to get by the end of the day. We've had a couple of weekends off, but now it's going to be a sprint to the championship. IndyCar, including today, racing the next three weekends and four of the final five leading up to the championship in Sonoma. And this is the final super speedway race, one of two ovals remaining, and it's a 500-mile race today at Pocono Raceway. And the championship really couldn't be any tighter. In fact, it's the closest between the top two that we've seen since 2009. The top three separated by eight. That's the closest it's ever been in this format. Joseph Newgarden has vaulted to the championship lead for the first time in his career, and he got it done with wins in the last two events. Here we go! Green, green, green. Got a vibration on the front. 10 4, fit this lap. Now the leaders are hoping that oh, it stays oh. green in a lockup. We have a full course caution. And crash. Be the leader once the sort's out. Be smart with those guys in front of you there. Racing each other, maybe a little too hard. Get caught up in their mess. The championship is even tighter. Joseph Newgarden has won again on the streets of Toronto. Yeah, boys. How about that? Great car, great job, good strategy. The Verizon IndyCar Series returns to the Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course. The field is yours, don't do anybody any favors. Make sure you got everything where you want it for the start. Just five to go in the championship, and it's green for Mid-Ohio. Oh, oh no, Newgarden. What a battle for the lead. Joseph Newgarden is going to get around his teammate. Newgarden gets by Will Power to take the lead in Mid-Ohio. 5.6 coming to the checker. Back to back in IndyCar. He will take the championship lead for the first time. Joseph Newgarden dominates in mid-Ohio. Great job, boys. You're awesome. I love driving IndyCar. So Newgarden now on top. And the championship contenders are going to have some work to do today. Look at the starting positions for those in the championship. Newgarden beyond mid-pack. Elio Castroneves crashed yesterday in qualifying. He starts in the back. Dixon just beyond the midpoint. Some have a good starting position like Simon Pagano and Takuma Sato on the pole, still in range in the championship. Well, we're going to bring in Townsend Bell and Paul Tracy a little bit early today. And let's start with Townsend with two of those championship contenders. In fact, the top two. All right, I'm here with half of Team Penske. This is the half that has not won an IndyCar championship yet. Now, my producer said, Townsend, you take care of it. I think as a former non-champion, they figured I could you know, relate to the plight a little bit. You know the feeling. Yesterday, though, Elio, I've never seen you so disappointed in an interview after the crash and qualifying. Was that the pain? Was that frustration? Or was that thinking about the championship and maybe the damage to the, to the points possibilities today? Well, the combination of a lot of things. First, the Hitachi Chevy was really, really good in practice one, and uh, probably, um, again, we're still kind of like not understanding what happened, bottom out a little bit, but um, 
and I, I'm not worried about in terms of uh, ruin my chance because this place, 500 miles, you know, it happens before people start in the back, finish in the front. So in that conditions, I know I have the best team, I have the best car, I know what I can do. I did this in the past, so um, I'm really looking forward to a Hitachi uh, Chevy good day, a car day, and uh, I tell you what, man, I'm feeling I'm feeling great. <laughs> That's a dangerous smile. That's a winner's smile. Now Joseph. At Texas earlier this year, there was a restart. You went big, agro style, high on the outside. There was a full moon that night. We've got solar eclipse coming tomorrow. What can we look for you from you today? Yeah, I didn't, I didn't take into account the kitty litter up high that night. So uh, I probably didn't need to do that, but for sure, I'm hoping we can repeat again. It would be great to have another win. Um, you know, we don't want to get too greedy. We, we've had a good year. It's been a little up and down. <laughs> Elliot knows we've had a good year. So is he, he's had a great year. But I think for us at Team Penske, we always have the same motto. You know, we got to put one car in victory lane. We like to have all four cars there, but that's not possible. So if we get all cars one, two, three, four, we're going to be pretty happy. But I feel good about it. I think we have a great car with, with Fitzgerald this weekend. All right. Well, let's head over to the other half of Team Penske Champion Circle with Paul Tracy. Well, I'm here with two guys that have won a championship for Roger Penske. I got Slick Willie P and Simon Pagano. Uh, Will, a couple weeks ago, you were disappointed at Toronto. You said on the radio, look, ah, we're out of it now, but you've rebounded really strong at Mid-Ohio. You came with a pole, solid second place finish. You brought yourself back into the championship and you're the defending champion here. So what do you think about today? Yeah, I mean, obviously a very long race. Um, car feels good. I think it's going to be tightly packed because a lot of people are running a lot of downforce and drag. but. Man, I mean, still a long way to go on the championship. Still a lot of points on the table. It can switch so fast, as you saw with New Garden, and um, it's going to do our best. Simon, you have been probably the most consistent driver throughout the whole year, but you haven't been able to get yourself to the points lead, but your finishes have been solid throughout the whole year, and you were ultra fast here last year as well, led a lot. So what do you think your chances are for today? I think we have a really good car. Um, very happy with the way the, 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 the car's been behaving all weekend in traffic, in qualifying, and I think Chevrolet uh, has really stepped up their game. So I think we have a good shot here. The Hondas are strong in this configuration, but I really think we have a, we have a good shot. So opposite to Will, I actually think this is one of the most important race of the year. Um, like he said, you can, it can swing your way if you do really well here this weekend. So, uh, so much on the edge that anything could happen. Well, everybody wants to know, are you guys going to race all the way to the checkered flag at Sonoma and keep pushing, pushing for a championship, or will you concede it all to your teammate? Oh, well, it's going to be a fight between the teammates, so, you know, we'll be racing each other pretty hard. I think Dixon's going to be there. He's always there, uh, and us for sure. Um, I think he's going to go all the way to the end. Well, there you go, folks. These guys are going all the way to Sonoma to the checkered flag trying to win a championship. I like it sending PT and Townsend out. Cub reporters getting right the scoop today and appropriate that the former champion Paul Tracy talks with those who have won championships. That's what everybody's trying to get done. So that's a, certainly a story, but there are other stories this week in IndyCar and really good news. The bad was this at Indianapolis in qualifying for Sebastian Bourdais, but somehow he's already been back in the car, tested at Mid-Ohio, and this week he was officially cleared by IndyCar, and we're hearing we might see him in the finale at Sonoma, maybe before, but that seems the most likely. Now, someone we will not see, certainly in the number seven Schmidt-Peterson Motorsports car again this season, is Michaela Lotion. Announced this week that he will not return to that car, and Sebastian Savedra will be in at least the next two weekends. And here this weekend, oh, yesterday was very treacherous. First in practice, Ed Carpenter with pretty significant damage. They couldn't get the car repaired in time to make it a tech, so he was unable to qualify. Ed Jones with more minor contact. And then a big one in qualifying, Elio Castroneves. He's okay. He'll start in the back, but it was in question for Ryan Hunter Ray. After this massive shunt, he hit the wall a couple of times. Spent some time in the hospital last night. Sore knee, sore hip, but he's been cleared to drive, and Ryan Hunter Ray is standing by with our Katie Hargett. And we also saw Sebastian Bourdais crash in that package. And Ryan, your hit was actually harder than Sebastian's, and we know where he is today. You had 137 G hit. What hurts today? Uh, just the whole left side, the hip. You know, I'm a pretty big guy, so not much seat in there. You know, so it, it wasn't a lot of energy dissipation, and um, it, it's it's one of those situations where I'm just I'm very thankful that it wasn't anything more serious, and that I could actually be at the racetrack today. 
uh, in the race car. So a uh, big testament to safety, big big thanks to the Homacho safety team and, um, and and the Pocono medical staff. So I just want to say hi to the family at home. Love you guys and uh, going to go out there and uh, push 110%. You were able to get a few laps in this morning. Any changes needed to adapt to the car? Just getting the trust back, you know, getting through turn three again, seeing those tracks going to the wall there. It, it'll take, um, I think, another 15 probably to get fully settled in. But it's um, it was nice to at least get back in the car and, and, and trust it going through turn three. So I got a, I got two laps at, at speed. Um, but, um, you know, we have quite a few strong cars in the back. So it should be should make it pretty interesting, to say the least. He charged to the front twice last year from the back. I think he can do it again today. Kevin? Oh, Katie, he was so strong here last year. We're so happy to see that Ryan hunter Ray is OK. Another one to watch is going to be Scott Dixon. He won here in 2013. He's a multi-time champ, and he's still in the mix. We're going to talk to him coming up in just a few minutes. You're watching IndyCar Live, brought to you by Verizon. Go inside IndyCar all season. Download IndyCar Mobile from Verizon. Well, Chip has a chance to win the Cup Championship and the IndyCar Championship. There's his top guy in IndyCar, Scott Dixon, who has led for much of this season and appeared to be in a little bit of control after his win at Road America about a month and a half ago. But the last three races have not gone to plan. Scott Dixon, the master, is going to take the checkered flag and win for the first time in Road America and the first time in 2017. Look at that, they touched. These are the things you gotta be really careful about when you're dealing with your teammate and your championship leader. Dixon needs to hang on to this position. Oh! oh. Will Power, Will Power the in the wall. Breaks his wing. Dixon has a flat left rear. That's Scott Dixon, he's wounded. It goes from bad to worse oh. for Scott Dixon. Scott Dixon, he leads the points, but has had a very, very difficult day today. There's a problem on the left rear. Everything just seems to be wrong for Scott Dixon. It was just one of those days where I think everything possibly could have gone wrong. I think we can turn around and hopefully in a couple of weeks we're going to have a good one. Scott Dixon making his way out here to driver intros. And the last thing you said in that interview after Mid-Ohio, you were looking forward to a reset here at Pocono. How's it gone? First time here with the Honda Aero Kit. Uh, it's definitely been interesting, not as smooth as we probably would have liked, but uh, you know, I think um, after having a good run from a couple of teammates, there, especially with you know Charlie and TK, you know I think we're confident going into the race. But uh, you know we we'll have to see how it plays out. It's a long race here. Uh, excited for NTT data, and hopefully we can have a clean run today. We have some highlights here of your win in 2013, showing that you started 17th. You can win this race from anywhere. Today it's ninth. How do you view your chances? Yeah, that was a, uh, a fantastic year. Obviously a sweep for the team. Uh, you know, to take all three top spots was. That's the goal today, you know, it's what we'll definitely try and do. But, uh, you know, we're, we're starting a little uh, further up the up the grid, not, you know, exactly where we want to be, and there's definitely some strong cars. So, well, uh, we'll just have to take it uh, as it comes today, see if we can keep up on the updates and uh, have a good strong race at the end. All right, go get yourself introduced. That's Scott Dixon, starting ninth, only eight points out of the championship. Thank you, Jan. The fans want to say hello to you as well. And Scott referenced that 2013 sweep for Ganassi. They are strong here again this year. Now, last year, we had all kinds of drama, a frightening moment on pit lane, and the team that's been the most successful here in IndyCar prevailing yet again. The high-speed roller coaster that the Indy Pocono 500 is is about to get underway. The weather absolutely perfect today, and the racing should be intense. Already they're fanning out. Three, four, five wide. And it's getting crazy back there. Back and forth, leapfrogging. Now Ryan hunter Ray just continues to charge forward. Now about to take the lead. What a drive. Things mixing up on pit lane. Oh, we have contact! Huge crash on pit lane. That's Rossi, Kimball, Castroneves. What a terrifying moment for Elio Castroneves. Will Power up to third. Nice march through the field for Power. Pagano has pounded the outside wall. The points leader is done for the day. Hunter Ray's got an issue. What do I do? What happened? You got to talk to me. We have no idea what's wrong. Why are you here? No, it just won't. It has no power. It won't go. And power cycling coming down pit lane. Boy, how things have changed. Will Power out in front right now. Can Power take another victory? Talk about determination. Ryan Hunter Ray will not be held back. Ryan Hunter Ray down to third. They've worked on this number 12 all day long. Twin checkers are out. Will Power goes to victory lane. 
Awesome day, boys. Awesome day. Great job. And Pocono Raceway, always a crazy one. Gray, Ray Hall, yesterday in qualifying, you had that nasty cut in the tire, still somehow managed to qualify seventh, but Pocono Raceway hasn't been kind to you. What's been going wrong here, and what do you have to do today to get to the front? Yeah, you know, I think it's, it's bitten us over the years uh, a little bit, um, you know, but really, you know, hopefully we'll be able to put it together here today. I mean, in 2015, we we're really good. We just had a bad stop, put us in the back, and then got collected. Uh, you know, but hopefully we'll be able to rebound a little. Last year I had some bad luck with a with a uh, actually a puncture in the underwing, which killed our pace. But you know our car hasn't been the best this weekend, but hopefully we can you know find a little bit and get the number 15 up front. Now you're on the outside looking into the championship, 58 points back. Is there still anything in the back of your head thinking I can still get this, or is it just one race at a time? Well, we got to take it one race at a time. 100%, we can still get it. Uh, we had a great car at Watkins Glen last year, uh, so I expect us to be really strong there. I expect us to be very good at Sonoma. Obviously, today is a big day for us. St. Louis, I think, is going to be a Penske parade. So, uh, you know, this is a big day for us to, to, to maximize our points. Um, you know, so we'll see how it goes, man. But I'm excited to be here today. Uh, Pocono, Pennsylvania, period, you know, with Pet Boys and, and our Bobby Rowe Automotive Group and Sunoco, a lot of my partners, you know, that are based right here. It's a special day. Hopefully, you know, we can put a good uh, product on the track and have some fun. And as we're riding around the track here, so much wind, so many gusts. How's that affected the overall setup? And what are you going to have to do here for, for all the different parts of the track? Well, the wind's ugly today, and we're turning into it right now here in turn one, which is a crosswind on the front straight to the opposite. Well, not the opposite, but yesterday we had a big tailwind. So it is going to change the cars considerably. I would expect right about here, you know, where we're at now, the front, it's going to be extremely positive when the wind, you know, hits the nose. And in traffic, uh, you know, that could make things very difficult and, and a lot of our lives difficult. So so, uh, you know, we'll see how it all plays out. It's going to really, really push us into three. So I'd anticipate a lot of understeer there. But look, everybody's car is going to be different. You know, like I said, we need to do the best that we can today, maximize our points, um, you know, and really just try to try to get this thing in victory circle, you know, no matter how we can make it happen. It's going to be a long 500 miles, Kevin. Wow, that wind sounds fierce. I hope it is not as bad as it sounds like, but it's a bonus right around to learn the track. And there's Tony Kanaan, who also has not had great results here. His best finished ninth, but he's led all four times at Pocono. And he and Robin Miller recently went to the Indiana State Fair. That's become an annual tradition. We'll revisit that coming up in a moment from Pocono Raceway on NBCSN. Pocono Raceway is the most unique place we go to. What has become one of my favorite racetracks, an oval unlike any other. 500 miles around that place will wear you out. It's very difficult to set up the car because of every corner is completely different. They call it the tricky triangle for a reason. You're constantly battling to, to try and reduce understeer in one and then fix a loose car in turn three. And you gotta trim it out to be fast enough to beat the competition. Pocono is a one oval where you get a benefit from trimming out. I love that. Puts it in the driver's hands. It's the one place on the schedule that is, I think, equally as sensitive to all of the little factors, whether it be a little bit of wind or a little bit of temperature or track temp or whatever. It's, it's just like Indy from that perspective. It always presents its own unique challenges. car is different, and this might be the unique, most unique oval, if you want to call it that, in IndyCar racing. Welcome back to Pocono Raceway, about 15 minutes from the command to start engine. And we've talked about the championship and how tight it is at the top, and no seventh in the championship. The pole sitter, Takuma Sato, picked up a much-needed bonus point yesterday, but it took some big-time bravery to stand on it. It's crunch time and qualifying at Pocono Raceway. Whoa! And now Ryan hunter Ray goes around. And he hits. Oh, oh two a big hits hit hard. inside. And when it lets go like that, this is not going to be fun. Nice to see him get out under his own power there. One more qualifier to go. That's his teammate, Takuma Sato. We know he can go fast. We know he's got plenty of speed. And we know that he's not afraid to hang it out there. Takuma Sato is on a flyer. Can he hang on? Oh! Tire. He didn't lift. No attack, no chance, folks. To the line. And you have P1. Nice job. Yes, yes. Takuma Sato wins the pole. You just never know with this guy what you're going to get. It's go big or go home, and go big paid off today. 
it definitely paid off in qualifying. In fact, you can tell that uh, this may be the slowest ride that Takuma Sato has around the track during this drive around, but the whole paddock is still buzzing over that clutch performance. Where does that rank for you as far as that kind of feeling that you have in the car in your racing career and getting that done yesterday? Well, that was an amazing feeling. You know, obviously as a, as a driver, you get the satisfaction. At the same time, it was so much appreciation from absolute from, from the teamwork, engineers and boys done super job. You know, number 26 for a car was flying and you get opportunity in that, I just so appreciate. Now, we talked to Graham Rahal about this. Obviously, very windy out here at the moment in this drive around. How big of a concern today for the race? Uh, usually, oval is more effective for the uh, crosswind, and particularly for this uh, turn three, is, uh, is it relatively flat. You know, basically, they have no banking support, but that means uh, you get a kind of neutral to oversteer moment. And uh, this heavy wind actually pushing off to the corner. So the front is the cars are taking off to the understeer, but yet you don't have a support from the banking. So cars are really lively and you got to work really hard. Beside on that, turn one actually is not bad, very steady. And when you come around, you usually get understeer, but because the head wing, you push uh, the front wing push down and I get a nice wind. So I think a lot of overtaking happening actually today, turn two and turn three. All right, very lively out here for the drive around as well, Kevin. And Takuma Sato is literally hanging on to his hat in the wind here. Well, we can ride along with Takuma thanks to IndyCar Mobile from Verizon today. He has our Verizon streaming cam. Go inside IndyCar all season. Well, the grid is getting really busy. They're gathering, just about ready to get going. And that's where we also find Robin Miller, who I'm not sure if it's Robin or Tony Kanaan, leads a group to the State Fair every summer. You know, Kevin, we always hear that race drivers are athletes. Well, you check Tony Kanaan. Connor Daly and Anders Cronin out. You be the judge. Are these guys athletes? We made a big deal because the Indy 500 just had its 101st race. The Indiana State Fair has been going on 160 years. So 10 years ago, Anthony Kanan, also known as TK, the 2013 Indy 500 winner, decided, what if we brought Indy car drivers to the State Fair and watched all these physically fit men go berserk with deep fried Twinkies and malts and milkshakes, all the things that are going to slow them down. You got you want a grilled cheese, brother? That's first. What's up? Oh, did you want something? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to the midway to prove once and for all most of these guys aren't athletes. They're good race drivers, but they're not athletes. Yeah, we play basketball. Absolutely. All right. If you score more points than she does, I'll give you a hundred dollars. All right. Connor shot is improved. Yes! Now it's on to the football throw where Anders Krohn is going to shine. This man is married to Johnny Unitas' granddaughter. Is that true? It is true. It's 100% oh true. Let's go. Yes! Yes! He made one! Oh, my God! He looks so surprised. I've never seen that coming in a million years. <laughs> she has it in her bloodlines. Watch this. This is the most impossible game on the midway. So here's what you do. You act like that glass is Chip Ganassi. <laughs> Shut up. He's got a good arm. No, I don't think so. What? Yeah! Yes, sir! How about us? Look at that! I want a few break ones. <laughs> We've been here for 10 years. We've never seen anybody break one. The story of my year. Act like one of these bottles or one of your old boyfriends that you hate. We didn't, have, we didn't have enough tape to roll with so we tried a hundred times. We had to cut it. All right, this is the end of the thing. Three people threw up. Five people aren't speaking to each other. A typical state fair. Thanks for watching. Here's what we learned. Our Katie Hargett definitely has the best arm of all the guys. And Tony Kanan cannot walk 10 feet at the state fair without being stopped for a picture and autograph. It's always a good time, Kev. All right, thank you, Robin. In a moment, Townsend Bell and Paul Tracy will rejoin us here at Pocono Raceway. You're watching IndyCar Live, brought to you by Verizon. Go inside IndyCar all season. Download IndyCar Mobile from Verizon. 
contact on pit road between Ryan Hunter Ray and Takuma Sato. Sato just ran into me. What an idiot. We're racing at Pocono and already they're going. Whoa, the big crash. That is Sato. And that's a great sign to see Sato yeah. jumping out. Five laps to go. Sato with a big run here. Side by side. And Sato has the lead. Checkered flag is in the air. And the 101st Indianapolis 500 is won by Takuma Sato. Ah! Awesome. Hold on tight. It's Indy Car at Texas. Sato hangs tough on the outside. Sato coming to the bottom side of Sato. Oh! And they turn. Dixon goes around. Sato goes around. Oh. Scott Dixon is going to be furious. And what's in store for today? 500 miles, a super speedway, a beautiful day, and we're ready to go racing. Welcome to the Pocono IndyCar 500, and thanks for joining us today. From Pocono Raceway, we are in Victory Circle, where every driver is trying to finish the day today. I'm Kevin Lee, along with Townsend Bell and Paul Tracy. Well, we saw T-Bell some of the ups and downs for Takuma Sato, who's always exciting. What do we expect in this one? Well, let's face it, Takuma Sato is the wild thing of the IndyCar series. It's either a 108 mile an hour fastball right down the pipe or else he's throwing it up into the stands. It's checkers or wreckers with this guy. But today at Pocono, he has a lightning fast Andretti Honda. He'll start up front. And all the championship talk has been about the four Penske drivers and Scott Dixon throwing maybe Graham Rahal. But Takuma Sato has a mathematical chance at this championship still, and he's making a late season run. And PT, this is a 500 mile race with the championship at stake and only four races to go. How would you approach this race? Well, the, the approach from the drivers is going to be frantic. Nobody has taken control of this championship this year. It's wide open for about six guys. So these guys are going to be going flat out all day. It's going to be a much different race than Indy. You're going to see less fuel saving and more racing. These guys were seven wide on a restart in the last couple of years. So watch out. It's going to be crazy. Now, Paul, what if you're Ryan Hunter Ray? He's really banged up after a massive hit yesterday. Well, these guys, he's he's not getting out of the car no matter what. You'd have to carry him out of the car. So, you know, these guys are tough. He's a tough guy. He's a machine. And that's why they call him the great American hero. And that's uh, from earlier today during the morning little quick warm up. What do you think Townsend. Well I think luckily if you want to call it luck it's a big accident for Ryan Hunter Ray but the pain is on the left hand hip for Ryan Hunter Ray. This is an oval so all that load shifts to the right hand side. So luckily for him it goes away from the injury. I think this is going to be good. We are in store for good entertainment today and it's about ready to get going from Pocono Raceway. Thanks for joining us for IndyCar Live presented by Verizon. We're going to get it going in just a moment. Stay with us here on NBCSN from Pocono Raceway. With four races to go in the 2017 IndyCar Championship, a new points leader has emerged, Joseph Newgarden. In just his freshman year with Team Penske, the Tennessee native has earned three victories, the most of any driver this year. Joseph Newgarden dominates in mid-Ohio. And the tone suggests we're going to go on a run now. In pursuit is his teammate, Elio Castroneves, a 20-season veteran. A winner in the last oval race in Iowa, the Brazilian is still looking to win his first title. But four-time champion Scott Dixon looks to spoil the Penske party by winning his second race at Pocono today. time in the IndyCar Championship. Four to go, including this 500-mile race today. Welcome to the ABC Supply 500 from Pocono Raceway. We are nearly ready to get going today. So many storylines we've covered, and the final practice yesterday, Paul Tracy, Townsend Bell, might tell us a little bit about what we can expect in this race. Well, what I love is every driver I've talked to said they're not happy with their car. It's going to be a handful all day with the wind and the sun. That's why you shouldn't leave your couch for the next three hours. Well, it was a Penske Ganassi show yesterday in final practice, but watch out for these guys at Andretti. Words in motorsports. Here to give the command, please welcome Giovanni Petroli, managing partner of ABC Supply. 
Drivers, start your engines! As the drivers are getting ready for 500 miles, the mindset is to make sure you get into a rhythm. But the mindset in 500 miles here on pit road is different. For the crews, they know that 500 miles means at least six pit stops. And many of these crew members are thinking, please, don't let it be me who makes a mistake here. Because one second lost on pit road equals over a football field out on the racetrack. Katie? Charlie Kimball started on the pole for the last super speedway, but never had a chance to prove himself in the race due to mechanical issues. And that's pretty much been the story of his entire season. Today, he's starting third and needs a smooth race to prove himself. Meanwhile, his teammate Tony Kanaan is starting alongside him. He was the most hated man in the paddock following the race in Texas, but I think he's going to be really aggressive again today as he goes for his first win in three years. Sanders. Yeah, Katie, I think the biggest storyline of the guys that just drove by me here, Graham Rahal and Gabby Chavez. Graham Rahal going for his first win ever here at Pocono Raceway. Never done that before. And then Gabby Chavez has been so impressive this year with Harding Racing. They finished ninth at the Indy 500 and fifth at Texas Motor Speedway. What can they do here, Robin? A long time ago, only four or five years ago, Ed Carpenter was the man to beat on ovals. Everybody said it. It didn't matter that he was just an oval track specialist. He was the guy to beat. Well, he hadn't won a race since 2014. He led five laps in Indy this year. He started second. He's still got the speed, but it's been a long time since he's had a good result. He's only had one top ten this year. It's really tough for a guy that's a car owner and a driver to separate himself on race day, and especially a place like this with a tricky triangle. He crashed yesterday. He starts last today. But guess what? Ryan Hunter Ray went from 22nd to first last year. And Ed Carpenter is somebody to watch today because he will be moving forward. Kevin? And Robin, there are some legit contenders from the back. And when we talk about Pocono Raceway, you've been here just about every year, dating back to 1971. This track was built for IndyCar Townsend. And as I mentioned, I think it's maybe the most unique oval, if you call it that, that we have. For sure. It starts in turn one. Remember, Roger Ward designed this place. There's Mario Andretti. Roger Ward said, I want to build my dream racetrack. He took turn one from Trenton, New Jersey modeled that here at Pocono. Turn two, just like the Indy 500, one of those four 90-degree corners as we see Takuma Sato working it through at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. And then turn three, this was modeled after Milwaukee, the famous Milwaukee Mile. And that takes you back to the front straightaway with six degrees of banking. Now, let's talk about the front straightaway here at Pocono because it's longer than anything else on the oval racing schedule. This thing stretches a full 33, sorry, 3,740 feet. Indianapolis, 3,300 feet. And then this is what's really cool. 90 feet wide at Pocono, and this is what it can do for you. Look at this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm going to say almost eight cars wide, and it gets crazy as we ride on board with the madman of IndyCar all charging for the lead going into turn one. I love this place. Well, let's find out how they're going to line up, and talent is spread throughout, Paul. Well, the guy of the moment, Takuma Sato, the Indy 500 winner, laid it down yesterday, but watch out for Pagano, last year's series champion. Looking back at road two, Charlie Kimball with a nice qualifying run. His teammate, Tony Kanan, will start outside. Will Power, last year's winner here. He felt this car was really good. And another guy who could be a factor today, he's an Indy specialist, another Indy 500 winner, Alexander Rossi. Behind those two on row four, Graham Rahal, championship contender. And how about a big shout out for Gabby Chavez with that Harding Racing team making a couple of entries to the IndyCar championship this season with a great qualifying spot. Multi-time champion Scott Dixon, the guy you can never count out, and his teammate Max Chilton, he led laps at Indy 500, so he's looking for a good day today. Now we start the back half of the field. All these drivers will be looking for a big charge on the start. Ed Jones, the rookie, James Hinchcliffe, will start outside row six. Esteban Gutierrez and Joseph Newgarden, our championship leader. How is this guy back here? But watch out, he'll be moving forward. And moving back to row eight, Sebastian Saavedra replacing Mikhail Aloshin in the Schmidt-Peterson car. And then local hero, Marco Andretti, going to look for something big today. The two A.J. Foyt cars on the same row on row nine, Connor Daly and Carlos Munoz. 
And behind those two, this is J.R. Hildebrand, and he really struggled to get the balance right in qualifying. And then Castro Neves with that big crash in turn one. He'll be starting from the back along with these two. Ryan hunter Ray injured today, but the guy is ready to race. And Ed Carpenter, he, both of these guys are going to be moving forward. Well, we have six excellent looks riding on board with Sebastian Saavedra, who has the arrow on board, starting from the 15th position confirmed for this race and next weekend at Gateway for SPM. Joseph Newgarden is the championship leader, but as mentioned, starts further back when he would like the Verizon on board. James Hinchcliffe has the Lucas Oil look, starting in the 12th position. Graham Rahal has the Bobby Rahal Automotive Group on board today, starting seventh still in the championship fight in sixth. And we want to watch Tony Kanaan at the start of this race, but he's got a good starting position in fourth, trying to get his first win in three years. And the pole sitter has the Verizon streaming on board. Takuma Sato, go inside IndyCar all season. Download IndyCar Mobile from Verizon. Boys, how good is this one going to be? I think it's going to be sensational and watch for everybody to adjust their cars as fast as they can from the get-go to try to get the balance in the window. Really, really fast guys at the back and some guys at the front that could be questionable. There's going to be comers and goers. We're into the final four of the 2017 Verizon IndyCar Series Championship. Seven are still in the chase for the title. 500 miles from the tricky triangle. Here we go from Pocono. It's green. And they're five wide already, Townsend. Look at this. I'm going to say that seven, Paul. It's crazy already. It's only three deep. Oh, cars moving around. Ray Hall moved over on Kanan, pushed him out, but Sato gets through in front throw. He's in one of the many blue and white cars. Takuma Sato leads. Tony Kanan has jumped through to second, and they're still chalking for position mid pack. Well, I'm on base. We got through that first corner. They were fanned out eight, nine wide, so they're still three wide. This is where it gets tricky. Wow, look at that. Three wide through turn two. The, the kink. Newgarden on the move just went by one of the one of the Ganassi cars. I think it was Dixon. So Dixon struggling. Castro Neves up 10 positions. Is that even real? I guess so. He probably followed Newgarden, or maybe it was the other way around. Elio from 20th to 10th in one lap. Look at Scott Dixon back there. He's going to the inside, side by side with Castro Neves. Ooh, Castro Neves had a checkup big time. He got up into that light gray area of the track. Not much grip up there early. He's just back to life now, finding the momentum. And here comes Ryan hunter -Ray. That's where he lost it last year, Castro Neves. He got up a little bit high, and that car got away, and he crashed out early as Ryan hunter -Ray backs out of that. He's being careful right now. He's got to get his legs under him. That did look super careful to me, Paul. Here he comes, looking up the inside of three. He said it'd take 15 laps to get his confidence back. Try one and a half. Heavy crash in qualifying yesterday. He did get a lap just to simply check the systems today, but really back in the car for the first time. And Hunter A trying to be on the move for the second year in a row from the back. Tony Kanar, Gabby Chavez uh, down on the inside there. He's lost a bunch of positions. He was holding off that Foyt car. As that Foyt car goes around the outside, he's lost seven positions in one lap. Talked to the Hardy guys earlier. What they like about Gabby Chavez is he doesn't get too ruffled. He does it, Rossi. Drive out Rossi. himself. Look at this. Didn't I say that guy was coming forward? There's, there's your Indy 500 champion. Goes past his teammate, the other Indy 500 champion. And remember, it was Alexander Rossi yesterday in qualifying who lead into Takuma Sato's car to give him tips on qualifying. So Rossi taking authority, taking the position. So look at Kanan scooting away while we watch the action in the field. Tony Kanan went to the front. Split screen on board with James Hinchcliffe and Joseph Newgarden. And Kanan has now led all five races here. And he's led every super speedway race since the DW12 was introduced in 2012. Well, Powers got a little run here on Sato. He was pretty up, up close there coming off turn two. Let's see if he can keep tight here and get a nice draft down the front straightaway. Power in the silver and orange Verizon car. He's got a good run. Can he get there? And he Sato does. in front of him. We're on board with Sato, and Power makes the move. He gets to third. 
And this is one of the things that Takuma Sato was somewhat concerned about. Obviously, fast pole position in qualifying. He says, I think we have a bit too much downforce. You can see that Charlie Kimball towing up from behind because of that downforce. This they can change in the pit stop, but right now, Sato going backwards too heavy on the car. And the problem for Sato is each position he loses, he also loses momentum at the corner exit, and it's a snowball effect. It's really hard to maintain position when you're getting past like that late into the corner. Newgarden on board here, he is up to seventh, so he's come from the back of the field and passed a ton of cars, so he's made a lot of, a lot of go. Castor Neves has faded back a couple positions now. Castor Neves up nine from the start, Newgarden up seven, and Ryan hunter Ray up five. Watch Scott Dixon there trying to make move to the inside of Max Chilton as Newgarden further ahead is going to get another spot and go to the inside of Takuma Sato. That's Newgarden in the black and green car this weekend. I'm surprised that Chilton didn't give that position to his teammate, but he makes a move. Sato's going backwards here. Late move into turn three on Sato does Chilton. That's going to kill Sato's momentum. And now Scott Dixon will have a run down the front straightaway. I wonder if Sato is running a lighter downforce setup, and now that he's faded back into the trap. Look at these guys, three, four wide here. So I wonder if Sato's got a, uh, a lighter downforce setup, and he's just struggling now that he's lost positions. There went Scott Dixon beat by Takuma Sato. And these are the two coin cars sorting themselves out with Castro Neves and Hinchcliffe. There's Hunter Ray at the back of that train. Carlos Munoz in the ABC supply car going to the inside of one of the coin cars. Something wrong with Castro Neves. Look at that. He lost three positions. Wow. Down the straightaway. Esteban Gutierrez for a guy who has next to no oval experience. He just charged through the middle like it was a Formula One start. So Castro Neves now has faded back to 13th. He lost three positions coming off one corner. So you must have some handling issues going on. On a Ray back there in the bright yellow DHL car. We're watching him trying to make his way forward. He's moved up six spots on board with James Hinchcliffe, who is running in the 11th position. We just talked about the guy with no experience. Look at this white car back here racing. Gutierrez with Hinchcliffe and Ray Hall. This guy's never seen this place. This is his second oval, and he's up racing with the top dogs. Sato, the pole sitter, has fallen back to ninth now and is in danger of losing more positions. John Graham Rahal is challenging him now. Yes, he is. And Paul, you asked the question. I wonder if it's down for us. I just checked with the team. They said Sato is not happy in turn one and turn three. He's having to lift. So yes, he's a little heavy on down for us, but right now it doesn't have the grip in the corners. That's why he's losing momentum. Now, all of that said, this is a 500 mile race with probably six pit stops. There's reason for optimism. How much can you change your car and make it better as we go through? Well, if you're not happy in two thirds of the track, I guess yeah. it's you know 33% <laughs> happiness for Sato, but he's hanging on right now. And here comes Graham Rahal. These four or five cars are just gonna chew up Sato here if Graham gets by and he does. So Rahal gets him. Hinchcliffe will be the next to get him to move up in the top 10. And up front there, that's Tony Kanaan. He took the lead by the end of lap one, has led every lap here, 500 miles in Pocono. You're watching NBCSN's coverage of IndyCar, brought to you by United Rentals, official equipment rental services provider of IndyCar and proud sponsor of Graham Ray Hall. And by TireRack.com, find, deliver, install, smarter Tire Rack. Future racers as young as five years old, up to about 15 year olds. Quarter midgets here, just outside the track in the parking lot. We went over to watch for a little while yeah, yesterday. Yeah, we went over, I had a friend from Vegas in town, came all the way across country to race, and they, those little kids are getting after it. They want to be IndyCar drivers, but look at this, Kanan right here. We got a new leader in Rossi, but Kanan is fighting his way back. You saw it in nonstop with Alexander Rossi taking the lead on lap 12 on Tony Kanan, Katie. We just saw him take over the number 10 car, and just before he climbed in, he told me he feels like today is his best chance to win all season. That's because he feels like he has the exact same car as he did last year. That meant he could lead when he wanted to, he could follow when he wanted to, and it just so happened to be the exact same car that Ryan hunter Ray was running, and we saw him work his way up through the field twice. Anders? Katie, Tony Kanan is super happy with his car. I spoke to him before the race. He said, we're just making minor, minor tweaks to it. But here's here's a crazy fact for you. Tony Kanan has won at so many crazy super speedways around this planet of ours, and somehow has only finished ninth here at Pocono Raceway. He wants to change that today. He needs a win, Jan. And for Will Power, who runs right behind those front two, 
He's very happy with his car. He likes where he is, but he has radioed. I have a little bit of push. That's not uncommon when you're third car in line, you lose some air. That's obviously something that can easily be fixed at Will Power's first pit stop. And up front, Alexander Rossi in the lead, and he has now led every 500-mile race he started. That's not many, but it's all four. And what we got here is an 11-car train, and Castro Neves has kind of fallen off of this lead back draft. So these 11 cars are running, running pretty good speeds. Let's ride. A lot of reports of understeer out there. That was Graham Rahal's uh, strategist saying a lot of guys talking about understeer, so look for some changes. Look at the buffeting on this Indy car, this uh, helmet cam here. Graham Rahal's hands pretty smooth. Doesn't look like he's got a lot of understeer at Townsend. Well, you have to be smooth. You have to respect the dirty air in front of you in that if you get a little high, all of a sudden you can pick up clean air and you can't put too much wheel into it if you're understeering or else it'll bite you at the corner exit. You heard the radio communication saying a lot of people are struggling with understeer. That's because prior, Graham Rahal was saying, I have massive understeer. So that's a bit of his strategist, Rico Nault, kind of giving him some encouragement, saying, you're not the only one. We'll get this thing going. And now he's got a good draft going. A nice little run coming off the corner. He was pretty far back, but I think it's a little late to slide it in on Newgarden there. He got onto the limiter just as he popped out. I couldn't tell if that was in sixth gear or fifth gear. He might be running out of gearing in the toe. Back up front now with the leader, Alexander Rossi. Kanan, Power, Kimball, Pagano the top five. Dixon is sixth. Kanan just, got a nice, seventh. Kanan just got a nice run there. I don't think he's going to try to slide in and turn three, but he sure is staying close. He might be just content right now to just make some fuel mileage considering he led the first 12, 13 laps. I think the same could be said for Will Power, who runs behind this guy, Tony Kanan. Let's listen here on the throttle. Copy. That's Chip Ganassi talking to Kanan. Just listening to the breathe, and I think you're right, Paul. I think Kanan's just going to want to get the better fuel mileage that'll come from sitting in the draft here. See if he pedals it as he drafts up on Alexander Rossi. Yeah, a little bit there, a little breathe. So that's a guy that's just saving the fuel that'll either allow you to run a lap longer or take less fuel on the pit stop if you pit at the same lap as Rossi. But remember, Kanan started out leading, so they're probably at about the same fuel level remaining. So power has been the one that has been riding in traffic the entire time of those up front. This is one lap ago. This is when Ray Hall nearly got Joseph Newgard. Oh, and he did get him. So this was uh, not what we saw. So this was this was just a lap ago. So Ray Hall did get that position, and Newgard has fallen back to 10th position. Ray right, Hall up to eight. Right now we got a little bit of a Honda parade. We've got only three Chevys, and they're they're the Penskes that are in the top 10. So the top. 10 positions, it's mostly Hondas and three Chevys. You know, looking at the Penske, specifically Simon Pagino and Will Power, the front wing vibrates like crazy. I don't know if that's the Chevy body kit, but the Honda totally stable. But you see a big vibration, a big flutter. And I wonder if the drivers are feeling any of that back into the steering wheel. There you see it there, that's a great shot. It almost looks like a broken wing, but it's not. Will Power, his teammate, the exact same effect. It's almost the opposite of what we talked about a couple years ago, last year, where we were talking about the Hondas always, the wings were flapping around and moving all over. But look at that wing right yeah. there, flapping up and down. So you don't see that from the Honda cars anymore. Now the Chevys have got it. And let's just look at a Honda, maybe a Rossi up front. We zoom in, there's Graham Rahal, nice and stable, no vibration, just a little bit. And note that the end fence on the Honda, much, much smaller than the Chevy. When you have that big end fence out there, it's a lot of leverage on the front wing main plane. So just a subtle thing, but we've talked. Yes, it will. We talked coming into this race about the advantage Honda has on the super speedways. I think Gutierrez has a problem. He just pulled to the inside. He was running inside the top 10. He's 11th now, but he pulled down low. Looks like he might have a problem. There is Gutierrez. You saw it, Paul. Yeah, he was. He pulled down to the inside. I don't know if he got a broken back wing. He's 
definitely really way, slow. way off the pace he is now. Broken. The rear wheel guard is broken, and we need to check the suspension. I can see that rear rear wing back here is broken in that back corner. Oh, yeah. I can see the wing flapping around. See it fall down right there? That's the voice of Craig Hampson, his race engineer, saying we need to check the car. So not sure if there was contact, if he got up high into the wall. If they said they need to check the suspension as well, perhaps Gutierrez had contact. Yellow's out. And I did see a little piece flying a couple of laps ago. There. It was to the inside. He definitely the rubbed damage. the wall. You can see on the, on the side right there, it's scraped. So he has white walled the wall and damaged that rear corner of that bumper. So under caution for the first time, lap 23 of 200. And let's see if we can see Esteban Gutierrez in his first super speedway race. Just got a little bit high, a nice little run on Newgarden. Got high in the gray and just barely touched the wall. So slight damage. The good thing here is that it takes so long to get around under yellow. He, will, he won't lose a lap, and he's, he's got a pretty good car, so he can come back through. So pits would have been closed as hey, soon as the yellow now. came out. You should be pitting now. Yeah, they told them to stay out, so yeah. they're going to pit now when it's open. But this that's takes a while to get around under yellow. So. I think there'll be a lot of work to be done on that car. And, you know, that's a great example of a situation in oval racing, super speedway racing. You can't teach that by watching video. You can talk to the driver about the possibility, but you just have to, you almost have to make the mistake for the first time to learn it. Every driver in this field has done that at least once. So we're in the fuel window. They can go somewhere between 28 to 32 laps oh. plus you had the pace laps we see some debris flying there on yeah. track so i would think we're going to see everybody take this chance come in here the pits are now open we are done all right just stay in there esteban while they take a look at him but we have a bed right here that's craig hampson it sounds like that they are done so he's going to stay in the car for a moment. I believe that's what he said. We'll take a watch on that. He's going to stay in the car, though, because of the traffic that we're going to see in just a moment on pit lane, I believe. Alexander Rossi likely leading them down the field. Sarah Fisher in the pace car. It's Rossi, Kanan, Power, Kimball, and Dixon. And here they come. And it's been smooth sailing so far for Tony Kanan. He said to the team, no changes, please. I'm loving my car at the moment. They just need to execute a perfect stop here, four new tires, and they'll be on their way. Katie? And Alexander Rossi can put this car absolutely anywhere he wants. He can lead. He can follow the team out for changes. He said nothing. It's perfect. Dion? Will Power had a big lockup, and they're going for a quarter turn only, a front wing. There goes Rossi, but it looks like Will Power may pick up a position here with a good stop. He got one up to second. Rossi just barely beats Power out. So it's Rossi, Power, one, two coming out, then Kanan. Here's the look again at the line. Alexander Rossi maintains the lead through the pit stops. Then we're going to see Will Power come through. Tony Kanan is next. Dixon came right after, so Dixon had a really good stop. There's Dixon. So we'll have a restart coming up in just a moment. Everyone chasing the 2016 Indianapolis 500 winner, American Alexander Rossi. We're off and running at Pocono Raceway for the Indy Pocono 500. Our first caution, Esteban Gutierrez slapped the wall. We've also had our first round of pit stops. Alexander Rossi came out in front with Will Power and Tony Kanaan. And look at Ryan hunter Ray. heavy crash yesterday, and he's already worked his way up to seventh thanks to a lightning pit stop and great teamwork here, guys. Watching the 28 crew there in yellow right in the middle of the screen, and it seems like these guys just get jacked up for a challenge. They worked so hard to get Ryan hunter Ray's backup car built up, and look how he delivers here. Whoa! Four, five, six crosses the line and picks up a bunch of positions. Great job. And that's the advantage of this very wide pit lane. He got out and went all the way to the outside to clear himself. Meanwhile, we mentioned the cause for the caution. Katie is with Esteban Gutierrez. And he said he was going to use this very first super speed speedway race as a learning curve, but you were pretty racy out there, Esteban. But what happened when you made contact with the wall? Yeah, it was really, really fun. Uh, good racing out there. But um, but yeah, I mean, as, as you said, I mean, this is all experience. Unfortunately, um, at that point, I was 
going very strong. I came into turn three. Uh, it was pretty. Um, I had a lot, you know, a lot of space to the guys in front, but they started to drop in the middle of the corner. And as I started to catch them, I started to have massive, massive understeer, and I, I couldn't save it. And I just tried to reduce the, 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 the impact. Um, and that's all I could do. I did my best. Now we were back under green with Alexander Rossi leading. Kevin. But look at Tony Kanan come to the outside. Three wide coming into turn number one. Rossi on the bottom, power in the middle, and Kanan from third to first for the lead. Tony Kanan is really strong today. You just get the feeling he will not be denied on that restart. He wanted it, Paul. Big run by Kanan, but look at Hinchcliffe. He made a move down the inside of Graham Rahal. Three wide. That's a tough one to pull off on cold tires, and look at him sawing at that wheel. Also of note, two that were contending early from Ganassi, Max Chilton and Charlie Kimball had issues. They were running in the top six. They're at the back. We'll get to their story coming up in a moment, but the racing up front is fierce right now. Well, you've heard the term liquid courage. This is rubber courage, fresh tires for all these guys, and that allows you to take big, bold moves on parts of the racetrack you just can't use on old tires. Rossi. And look at this, Rossi. Coming Rossi back on Hinch. Coming back on Hinch. Hinch made a really big restart, but these guys, Whoa. Oh, these guys are getting tight. Looks like Texas all over again. Oh, boy. Hinch bit, with not giving it up. Some momentum from the high side. Look at Ray Hall coming now. He's going to have a chance at Rossi from behind. Oh, he's going to pop out here and make a move. Ray Hall in the red car. Rossi protects. Pagina. That's a tight pass to pull off. He protected, faded the inside, but Ray Hall slides it through. Rossi going backwards. The white and black car behind there is Simon Pagino, last year's champion, running in seventh. He's one of the four within 17 points of each other in the championship. And here's Joseph Newgarden right behind his teammate, running in eighth. Making a front bar adjustment. Newgarden softening up the roll rate on the front of the car. Helps get a little bit of grip in the turbulent air. I'll tell you, the guy we haven't talked about is the guy right here challenging for the lead, Dixon, to the lead. He came out in fourth. Now he's the leader. Kanan pulls over and lets him go by. So that's that team tactic we've been talking about, Penske versus Ganassi. And look at Hinchcliffe to the inside of power Outside. for third place. Wow. Very late into turn two. That's going to allow Graham Rahal to make a move on power. Power now under attack. Oh. He cut, tucked it in there tight. I don't know if his spotter told him he was clear, but Rossi gets a big draft down the front straightaway. This is a 500-mile race. I'll tell you what, if somebody jams you up in turn three, you are just a sitting duck down this long front straightaway at Pocono. Now, Hunter Ray and his teammate, Marco Andretti. Marco Andretti, he was at the back of the pack on the first stint. Now he's right at the front. He told you guys on the pre-race, these guys are going to be frantic all day. These guys are racing like it's the last stint of a 500-mile race. Marco also picked up about six spots on that pit stop. There's J.R. Hildebrand. Green Fuzzy's car going to the inside of Ryan Hunter Ray. Meanwhile, up front, it's still Scott Dixon leading his teammate, Tony Kanaan. No stage racing needed here in IndyCar. Look at these guys fanned out 220 miles an hour. All four of the Ganassi cars are hooked up, but two of them are in the back now. Charlie Kimball and Max Chilton after they made extra stops during that yellow flag sequence. Here's our pole sitter. To Kumasato, who now runs back in 17th position. Will Power, he was solid at the beginning of the race, just sitting in third place. He is hanging on right now as Simon Pagano goes by. Throwing the block, Will Power is on Pagano, forcing Pagano around the outside. That's a smart move from Will Power. That allows you to not get checked up at the exit of the corner by forcing the faster car to make the more difficult and longer pass around the outside. Here comes Rossi on Ray Hall. You can hear Rossi at, uh, having to, or uh, Graham Rahal having to breathe that car through the corner as we see Newgarden turns turns the trim switch and gets a run on him because he was pedaling it through one and two. There have been over 185 on track passes for position already. Newgarden getting another. Hinchcliffe now challenging Kanan for second, and he's going to get it. These Schmidt cars were mega fast last year. Michaela Lotion led a long part of this race so that they've got their setup figured out. We've seen Will Power start to drop back, so I sprinted down to Penske to find out. We see that Rossi making the move to the inside. 
close quarters out on the racetrack, and that's what happened to Will Power. He lost some momentum in turn number three. They say he has not been on the radio to be able to complain of any issues mechanically, but wow, it's frantic out there. Look at the penalty to Rossi for that late move on Tony Kanaan, and remember the history this year between Kanaan and Rossi. There was the crash at Texas, the crash at Road America. Rossi the crash at Texas, Kanan the crash at Road America, and these two drivers don't give each other an inch on the racetrack. That was close. So it's all about momentum. It's all about momentum here. If you get the door shut on you and you get bogged down, you're going to get passed by three or four guys before you can recover. The super speedway racing in IndyCar continues to be tremendous as Rossi gets back by Rahal. And let's watch the sequence from just a moment ago. So that's Rossi making a very late move, I think too late to try to make a move on Tony Kanaan. He realized it checked up to avoid contact and then he paid the price for it down the back straight. Lost two positions with Newgarden and Ray Hall getting around. He's got one of them back now. That's Rossi in the red, white and blue car. Newgarden in the black and green car with Fitzgerald Glider Kits is the sponsor this weekend, is right in front of him, running in fourth. He's the championship leader and has won the last two races. Right now as the points sit the way they're running, Scott Dixon is back in the points lead by 11 points over Newgarden. So every time there's a position changed, the results are changing of where it's gonna be at the end of the year. So guys, these are the points as they run right now. How about that? Dixon would reclaim the championship in the order they run on track at the moment. Pacino fourth, Castroneves is third, Newgarden 11 points behind. And I'm told 196 passes on track have already taken place. We're not even a quarter <laughs> of the way through this race. We're 30, 36 laps into a 200 lap or so. Long, long way to go. There's gonna be, there's gonna be a thousand passes in this race. And I, I think there's a bit of a grudge scorecard that's developing, right? There's guys stuffing each other late in the corner. That's gonna come back on a lot of these drivers when it really counts in the last 10 or 15 laps of this race. One and three Ganassi right now. Note that those cars are almost identical. NTT data kind of takes us back to the, the target years. They have added since the weekend started. A little bit of orange on the nose of Dixon's car. There's orange on the camera mount that you can distinguish them just a little bit. So Ganassi is in front right now, first and third. And let's go back to 2013, the first time IndyCar was here since 1989. That's Charlie Kimball, Scott Dixon going by him. And it was a one, two, three for Ganassi with Scott Dixon on the top step of the podium. And he leads today's 500 mile race at Pocono. Welcome back to the ABC Supply 500 on NBCSN for Pocono Raceway with Paul Tracy, Townsend Bell, Katie Hargett, Jan Bikas, Andrews Crone, Robin Miller. I'm Kevin Lee. Let's check out the Firestone biggest movers. You see Scott Dixon up at the front leading James Hinchcliffe. Tony Kanaan is in third. But look at all these jumpers, including Ryan Hunter Ray. Got some Tigers out there today, Paul. I mean, when's the last time you saw five guys move up eight positions or more from the start? That's huge. Yeah, a lot of action on track. Guys coming and going, but Andretti was running at the back at the in the first stint. He's recovered nicely, so he must have made some type of setup change and a really good pit stop, so currently running eight. By the way, just like that, three laps ago, we passed 100 miles already. Did not take long. That's a good shot of Marco Andretti. Local hero lives just down the road in Nazareth, and Alexander Rossi makes a move on Newgarden there. And remember in the first stint, guys, the second half of that first stint, it was Alexander Rossi who was the strongest car on the track. So I think it just needs to be patient, and it's going to come to Rossi on each of these stints. Graham Ray Hall going to the inside of Newgarden. He'll get that position. That's fifth. So I love watching these events. Townsend, you've had great success in Indianapolis on super speedways. PT, of course, you have as well. What do you guys think of driving them? Do you enjoy them? Well, it's it's all about just timing and placing your car in the right spot on the track and really just setting up your pass because like Rossi, if you dive it in too late and get your nose chopped off, 
and kill your momentum, you're going to lose two or three spots. You're trying to make one, and you'll lose two or three. And I think the experience that Alexander Rossi is gaining in his first two years in IndyCar is invaluable in, an, in understanding that you don't have to race too hard. Nobody's going to walk away from you in this race. The important thing is stay there in the top five, tune your car, and get ready to make a charge to win it at the end. Well, right now, the way it's shaking out, look, Dixon has gotten himself in the lead. Uh, that's where he wants to be because he wants to win this championship. But I think Hinchcliffe probably has one of the faster cars on track, but he's content right now to just sit there in Dixon's draft. I think from Kanan, Rossi, you see these guys right here? These guys are all jockeying around trying to get up further up in that line. Yeah, but look at Alexander Rossi coming off turn three with a big run on Tony Kanan. So these two guys, remember what happened just a few laps ago. Here comes Rossi. What does he do? He whips it out. He's going to go through. Kanan lifts off, lets him go. So those uh, those two guys are playing fair with each other. So that's for third position. So it's Dixon, Hinchcliffe, and now Rossi. Kanan back there in the blue and white car, one of them in fourth. Newgarden, black and green behind him in fifth. And it's Ray Alpagino, Power, Andretti, Hunter Ray, Elio Castroneves, 11th. Remember, he picked up 10 on the opening lap. He's kind of stalled there running in 11th position right now. Let's check in with Jan. Scott Dixon on the radio with Mike Hull. You just had a conversation about whether Scott wants to lead or not and whether he wants, you want him to drop back. Are you happy leading? Well, I think at this point, we got four races to go and points are important. So, you know what, at best, if we sit out front and don't make the mileage the guys behind do, it's one lap short. And you know, unlike Indianapolis where you lose over 40 seconds in the pit lane, you only lose 30 seconds here. So you don't go down a lap by by coming in that lap early. So uh, it's probably worth it. All right. Again, what he's talking about is that by Scott Dixon staying out front, he will have to stop potentially a lap earlier. But they think it's safer keeping him out of trouble and mo maintaining momentum. Well, it's much safer to be sitting out front because from third, fourth, fifth back, these guys are all jockeying around positions and running each other hard. Key word from Mike Hall, probably. Well, that's what I like to hear, though. I want to lead. They're going after it, and we're just about a quarter of the way through. Dixon, Hinchcliffe, and Rossi at Pocono. Watch every IndyCar and NBC race online, on tablet, and connected TV devices with the NBC Sports app. You can watch us anywhere. Download the app or find out more at NBCSports.com. We're a quarter of the way through a 500-mile race. The last of the season, the last super speedway for IndyCar, and only four to go, and it's been good. Scott Dixon leading Alexander Rossi, and here is Joseph Newgard going to third around James Hinchcliffe. And look at Rossi thinking about challenging Dixon for the lead now. I don't think anybody is as strong as Alexander Rossi in this race, especially the second half of the tire stint. Rossi seems to be able to follow closer than just about anybody in traffic. It's been nearly radio silence all day for Alexander Rossi. On the first stop, he said it's perfect, no changes. The team asked him just now if he wanted any changes. You see Hinchcliffe get around Rossi there, but on the second stop, they asked if they wanted if he wanted any more changes, and he said a teeny tiny bit of front wing to help with turn three. T-Bell, what would you do? I would leave it exactly as it is right now. <laughs> the tricky triangle is so sensitive on setup, and look at Rossi. He's making runs here that nobody can do at this point in the tire run, and he might have a shot Paul on the front straight. Well, we're going to see these guys pit within the next two or three laps, and the first guy to come is going to be your leader, Scott Dixon. We know that. We know from his team manager said, look, it's costing us some fuel, so we're going to have to come in a lap earlier than these guys, but it's not really that big of a detriment here on this big of a track. Rossi has won one race. It was the biggest race in the world last year's Indianapolis 500, but the guy he's chasing fourth all time only AJ Mario and Michael and if he wins today Scott Dixon would tie Michael Andretti with 42 IndyCar wins that could have been a little signal that he's coming to the pits see how he dived down right there he signaled to Rossi hey I'm coming in so I noticed he popped down on the back straight and that's just letting the other driver have a heads up I'm backing off right here in the corner see and he peels off might wonder why would you want to indicate to your competition when you're pitting because if you don't they can climb all over you literally run into the back of you there at turn three at the apex Dixon on pit lane now so by leading he burns a little bit more fuel Jan yes he's going to need all the Sunoco here so he can get to that next stint 
And we'll look to see if they make any front wing changes. This was predicted that he would be first. No, I don't see any wing changes. That's 7.3 seconds. Again, this will work for him as long as other people stay in this same cycle. Others now putting their tires out for pit stops, just as Mike Cole predicted a lap or two later. You might have also seen Ed Carpenter, who has not been having a good day and crashed yesterday in this qualifying. That's him coming off pit road right now. And we've got others coming on to pit lane. So it's going to start getting busy with green flag pit stops. Rossi stays out again. Newgarden in the top five all day. Joseph Newgarden on his last stop, they actually made a rear wing change and a front wing change. They're not going to do that this time. This is going to be much quicker. Katie, that was 7.2. And it was a terrible first stop for Simon Pagino. They didn't get the changes they wanted. This time, he needs some help with turn one, so they added some front wing. We also saw Gabby Chavez and Carlos Munoz make stops there. The rest of these guys are all coming in now, so you got a whole big pack of cars. So. Could have been a little advantage. Lockups coming in, but maybe a little advantage for Dixon to just have a nice clean pit. You could do your own thing, but look at how busy this pit is. Tony Kanan's been complaining of understeer, so they're going to add a turn of front wing. Otherwise, he's happy with the car. That's why he fell a little bit back in that previous stint. There you see it adding a wing. Katie? It's been nearly a picture perfect day for Alexander Rossi. As you see him pull out of his pit box, just a little bit of front wing for turn three. Jan? Graham Rahal just leaving the pit box. That was 9.1 seconds, so not an ultra fast stop. But here comes Sato. That's a much faster stop for Sato. But Rahal took a half a turn of front wing. That'll certainly help him. And watch this race. Scott Dixon coming around on track. We saw Rossi come back. How will they blend together? Rossi on the cold tires. On board now with Joseph Newgarden flying by James Hinchcliffe. Well, we've seen from the first stop. Dixon back in the lead, so it didn't cost them anything to go two laps shorter than, than Rossi on that fuel stint. Will Power again locks up on the way into his box. We're looking to see if Castro Nevis is going to take an opportunity to stop as well. No changes up front, but they waited for all the last for the Sunoco. 7.6 for Will Power. Where does Will Power blend out? Here comes the field down the front straightaway. That's Dixon leading Elio coming off pit lane as well. Power's going to blend up maybe right near Tony Kanan. He's going to end up back by Ray Hall once they get around the corner. So I think he's lost some positions by sliding wide. Side by side with Tony Kanan. That's Will Power. So Will Power on fresh tires, working it up to speed. Now, J.R. Hildebrand has not made his second pit stop, so he's the leader for the moment but he's going to give up that spot. He is now set to head down the pit lane. In fact, he is on pit lane right now. It's amazing how fast these cars get back up to speed. And this will give you a really good view for how Hildenbrand will fall back to his natural running position by staying out. About six, seven positions there. Hinchcliffe gets Newgarden for another position as they continue to go back and forth all the way through the field and especially up at the front. After pit stop number two, it's Scott Dixon, Alexander Rossi, James Hinchcliffe, and Joseph Newgarden, and Tony Kanaan. That's exactly as they ran right before the green flag sequence. And talking about how they run right now, Alexander Rossi has now worked himself mathematically into the championship hunt. As they run right now, Rossi would be seventh in points ahead of his teammate Takuma Sato. And this guy's making a, a really strong late season run. You never know what's possible as we go down the stretch. Well, Dixon right now is still content to lead, but having gone two laps less than Rossi, if he continues to lead, Jan, this could be a potentially and coming in four laps short. Yes, I agree, Paul. I would if I was in Scott Dixon's case. And remember, the call came on the radio originally from Scott saying, hey, Mike, you want me to drop back into traffic? Because he knows that, you know, I really don't want to be out here burning this kind of fuel. Let's see if now as Rossi challenges, if that's by design or just by speed. Oh, I think that was by design. That was too easy of a pass. So I think he backed it off and he's going to now sit on him. I don't think they can afford to lose that many laps on the stint. Rossi just looks unstoppable right now. Passing at will. He hit a bird oh, or something. There's a, he hit something on track. There's it's feathers like a, or something. Looks like a streamer. Yeah. Uh, almost like you would have on the end of a stick or something. Like a pom-pom. I think it's, it's gone. On, it's on the right side of the car. Maybe we'll get a sh an angle of it here, but it looks like it's gone now, but there was something stuck in the front suspension. But if that goes into the right side radiator inlet, 
that could really drive up the engine temperatures. Third time today, Alexander Rossi has led. He's led 19 laps. Scott Dixon running in second has led 25 laps. Kanan and Power have also led, and Hildebrand led a couple of laps see here. later. We see here something flapping around right there, right in front of the radiator inlet. And like Townsend said, if that ends up getting sucked in there, you will immediately run into cooling problems. It's like the Stars and Stripes uh, bandana you were wearing on your head a few minutes ago, Paul. I wore, that, I wore that in Sturgis for a week. Rossi's got stars and stripes on his car this weekend with a salute to the troops, helping them find jobs with their paint scheme. Alexander Rossi out front. He's led 500-mile races before. He's won the biggest 500-mile race in the world. Two years ago at the Indianapolis 500. Can he take another 500-miler today at Pocono? Rossi, Dixon, Hinchcliffe, Kanan, and Newgarden. Stay with us. Weekend tradition returns. Throwback NASCAR Monster Energy Cup Series racing from historic Darlington Raceway. Sunday, September 3rd at 5.30 Eastern here on NBCSN. Big development off sequence. Jan Will Power is rolling down the pit lane. Yes, first there was a radio report Wide saying open. that he might have a tire going down, but then there was a response that he might have a broken front wing. So we're checking the front wing and they're gonna change it. So it could be both, but they're making sure that they get this done now. On a super speedway, this front wing has a tether. They'll have to reach inside. That's for safety purposes. It makes the stop that much longer. And there's waving in the back, potentially a problem with a wheel gun. Wow, the cars are streaming by the front straightaway. This is not obviously going to help Will Power's situation at all. I think they might have left something in the nose of his car. It looks like the T-handle or there's a tether on the nose and the wing change. Yeah, Kanan just blowing by him. He's obviously got a problem, so we don't know if it was a wing or a tire, but man, that was a really, really unorganized stop. Not what you normally see out of Penske. They couldn't get the front wing off. They were struggling with, to get that away. The wheel gun in the rear had a problem, so it put him a lap down. I would have thought they could have maybe hung on there. Well, also the right rear tire changer was yanking on the wheel pod, the rear wing pod, yeah, saying nice it was one. loose, like suggesting there was an issue with the back. So big trouble for power. Kanan gets passed by Pagano. And again, I'll point to that excessive vibration on the Penske Chevys. The front wing's vibrating a lot. Well, while this all happened, we have Dixon now back to the lead and Rossi here fending off uh, Hinchcliffe and uh, the other Ganassi car. So Dixon has slid back into the lead and Pagano has moved forward. And that's Hinchcliffe working on Rossi now for second. So Scott Dixon, Outside. while Power Clear. was having his issues, went to the front. And now Rossi has dropped from first to third as Hinchcliffe gets back to second. That's Pagano back there in fourth. Kanan runs in fifth. And Marco Andretti has worked his way up to sixth. He had almost fallen the last at the drop of the green flag. And look at he and Kanan going at it. The first blue and white car in that battle is Kanan. Then it's Marco Andretti working on fifth place. Tony gave him the old Pruitt fade right there. You see, as we see, Marco here made a move on Joseph Newgarden. Joseph's been going backwards. He's got three Penske cars there. He's sliding by with his Andretti car. So. Uh, he just made a move on Kanan, and Kanan faded over on him as well. So I mentioned how fortunes can change in a 500-mile race. That first stint, Marco Andretti was in big trouble. They obviously made changes at the first stop. They picked up some spots on the stop, and now he is passing the fast guys and into the top six. Well, Look at Ryan hunter Ray in the yellow and red DHL car coming to the inside of Max Chilton, who had the early problem, but Chilton is a lap down. Remember at our last super speedway, Tony Kanan was not very popular on the racetrack. Always aggressive. Marco Andretti's gonna try his best to make another move as Ray Hall has a nice run down the back straight. Hunter Ray in front, actually that is Chilton. Inside, it's not clear. Three, fell back. So Ray Hall goes to Chilton's inside. Again, a lapped car. I've been wondering what happened to Max Chilton. He was running in the top five early in the race. Anders, what do you know? 
And the reason why he was in the pit for such a long time and actually came back into the pits is he has an issue with a wastegate for the turbo. They had to take the side pot off as we see a huge battle in the back here of the pack. But yeah, huge issue with the wastegate. But he just came on the radio and said, guys, we can still get this. Katie? We also wondered why Charlie Kimball dropped back through the field. That's because on the last stop, the team actually dropped the car before the right rear tire changer was finished changing that tire. So they sent him out, brought him back in because they knew they were going to have to anyway and made a downforce change. Charlie Kimball is now very unhappy with that car. I tell you what, I got to give a shout out to IndyCar. They've mandated an aero package here to run. And I tell you what, it's not a pack race, but this is great race. The guys are racy. They could get back and forth. Look at these guys snaking around on the front straightaway. This is really, really good hard racing. There's Charlie Kimball there. He is in 11th, and he is still on the lead lap and on board with Joseph Newgarden who has fallen back to 10th position. Paul, I agree with you on the aero package. I think the other thing that's really cool today is it's tricky to get the setup right at Pocono. It's a narrow window. What that yields is you see a lot of guys struggle on the first stint, but make a few small changes, and all of a sudden they're right back in it. So a lot to play out here over the next 125 laps. Carlos Munoz having a decent day running in 12th position. He's been great on these super speedways when he was with Andretti Autosport, but it's all new this year as Foyt adjusts this year to the Chevy power after they have been running Honda. Will Power you see there at the tail end of the field just passing, but he's a lap down. So now he's got to come all the way through these guys and then come all the way back around. So he is going to need a yellow and we've only had one so far, which was a very, very minor incident. Could have been questionable even if they went to yellow for it. Scott Dixon, James Hinchcliffe, Alexander Rossi. That's the top three. Then you see Simon Pagano and Tony Kanaan. Great stuff. Stay with us here for 500 miles at Pocono. It's the ABC Supply Company Indy Pocono 500 on NBCSN. Scott Dixon is your latest leader. Alexander Rossi in second, James Hinchcliffe, Simon Pagano, Tony Kanaan. And Will Power led briefly early, challenged up front, but he's had issues, and for the moment, he finds himself a lap down, running in 20th position. Let's go back to what they were doing on that pit stop, and you mentioned, Townsend, that uh, I think yeah, they left at, something in. Look yeah, at this. it looks there's like a, these tethers. A, there's a little tether right here, and it says remove before flight, <laughs> and the reason you would have that on there, a lot of people don't know, is there's access for fans to be in the pit lane, and anybody could walk by that front wing and start turning on it. Unlike Formula One and NASCAR, IndyCar is much more accessible to the fans, Jan. Yes, and here's what they're trying to prevent happening, and that is someone walking by and making an adjustment. But typically, you leave those removed before flight when you bring the car from the garage area. This is Simon Pagno's wing. I checked all the other Penske cars. None of the spare wings on pit road have those removable tabs. So I have a feeling that it is brought out from the garage. They did not remove them, and obviously, willpower was sent out. I can tell you, right underneath here, there is a snap ring. That is what broke on Will Power's wing. This was moving up and down and changing the angle of the front wing. That's why they had to change it. All right, thank you, Jan. Let's go back a couple of races ago at Toronto. Will Power and Scott Dixon, who leads the race right now, they had a little coming together on the opening lap. Severely impacted the championship for both, more so for Will Power, because he finished last. For the first time since 2008, he could not get his car repaired. Dixon did make repairs, stayed on the lead lap, and was able to get a top 10 out of it. He's going to need some luck here. Hopefully get the field to pit under green, get your lap back, and then catch a yellow to then pit on the lead lap. Will Powers, he runs right now, would fall to sixth in the championship. With Alexander Rossi just 13 points behind in seventh as they run right now. Well, we've had a ton of lead passes up front. Like I said, Dixon is now back out front again. Hinchcliffe and Rossi were battling for second. Rossi has taken over second position, so we'll see. We're coming up pretty close to it. Here we go. We got the, the signal. I'm coming in next lap, so we'll see how many laps Rossi can do versus the last time it was two. I can't believe that statistic. 298 passes. Somebody just peeled off and came to pit lane. That's Scott Dixon. The leader is in, and he has to get on it. 
to get down to 60 miles per hour. So Rossi takes over the lead. Dixon makes stop number three on. Yes, and as we predicted, it's going to take a while for him to get back into sequence, especially if Scott Dixon has been leading. He is still within the pit window, which should not be a problem. Again, we don't see any changes. Wow, 6.1 seconds for Scott Dixon. That's fast. We'll have to see how the other cars respond. Well, we'll see how many laps Rossi and Hinchcliffe go. Carpenter well, pitted in with him, and look at Hunter Ray gets by Kanan. That's for fourth. Oh, and Kanan's trying to get to pit lane. No, he stays out. He's just bogged down. He got he got checked up in the middle of the corner. Look at it. You get checked up, like I said earlier. Ball you get a guy does a late pass on you and checks you up. He just lost three positions because of it. Look at Graham Rahal going to the inside in front of Marco Andretti there. Yeah, and if you remember in the previous pit stop, they added some front wing to Tony Kanan, and then he charged to the front all the way up to fourth, and ever since he's been fading, so they're potentially going to be making some tire pressure changes here in the next stop. And James Hinchcliffe has taken over the lead for the first time. Simon Pagano trying to come with him, working on Alexander Rossi. Hinchcliffe won at Long Beach earlier this season. Since then, he's led one lap. That came during the doubleheader at Detroit, but he's in front here at Pocono as pit stops under green continue. And that's Simon Pagano. And it was a long first stop for Simon Pagano as he makes the long trip down pit lane. You see him pulling into his pit box there. On the first stop, they actually completely missed the change that Simon was looking for. This time, they're gonna look to add some front wing as you see there, and he is down and away. Rossi's gonna come right back on Hinchcliffe. He wants the lead back. Side by side, Got Rossi, Hinchcliffe, and Rossi gets him. Well, he's now gone two laps over Dixon, so he's now going to make it three laps. It'll be interesting to see if he goes oh. forward. We see more guys peeling off behind, so we got a lot of cars coming down pit lane. Newgarden and Kanan. Kanan with a big lock up, trying to catch up to Newgarden. Newgarden was really aggressive off turn three. Yeah, and Tony Kanan just needs a clean stop here. He hasn't said he wanted any changes, but potentially that tire pressure change we talked about, adding some additional front wing here, Jan. Joseph Newgarden taking the opportunity for a stop as well. We're keeping an eye for Graham Rahal, who's expected to be on pit road. Looks like routine for Joseph Newgarden, and he'll get out ahead of those who just pitted as well. Big top fuel burnout by Joseph Newgarden. You gotta be careful. You gotta be careful you don't break any half shafts on that concrete, but we just saw Dixon go by, so all the rest of the guys coming in now, so it was three laps. Here comes Rossi, Hunter Ray, Ray Hall, Marco Andretti. And Alexander Rossi making the trip into his box. He is having an absolutely perfect day, silent on the radio, no changes for him. Meanwhile, his teammate Brian Hunter Ray, also in his pit box, you see him there just behind. They actually made a front wing and a rear wing adjustment. He's worked his way up to third, Jan. And for Graham Rahal, he just finishes his service. That's 8.7, look out. It's tight quarters as he leaves, and he lost a little bit of spot. We see Takuma Sato also finishing his stop as well. There goes Scott Dixon into turn one as the field comes back out. There's Simon Pagano. This will be tight racing right here at the exit. So three lap difference for those guys. We see Hinch come in, but that's four laps over Dixon. We'll, we'll see if that has cost him any time. And yesterday, James Hinchcliffe was really unhappy with this car. He said he felt really draggy, so the team made a lot of changes to that car overnight. Last time, they were the fastest on pit row. You see him actually overshoot his box. That's terrible. Last time, they were the fastest car on pit lane at a 6.6 second stop. This time, it's a complete opposite, a long one for James Hinchcliffe. He's going to lose a lot of positions. So James Hinchcliffe had taken the lead for a moment on Alexander Rossi, was running Second, when this green flag sequence of pits began, but he loses about two or three seconds, and look at all the track position he's going to lose. Well, tell you what, that's, that's the biggest lead of the race right now. Dixon has a 4.5 second lead over Pagano, so pitting early is not costing him time. Unlike a road course, will really, really cost you time. Here, it's not paying, it's not costing him anything. Well, the only thing that could cost Dixon is later in the race, depending on how yellows might fall, is if he gets stacked up and has to run long on the last stop. Here's Hinchcliffe, and just locks up the right front, and he has to release the brakes if he has that problem, because otherwise you're going to mow over your crew on the inside wall. 
Mike, you might get a penalty running over that hose. You can see he drove right over that hose, which is a pit lane violation. So that could potentially be a violation as well. So Hinchcliffe has fallen back to 12th. He's working on Carlos Munoz right in front of him now. Hitting equipment on pit lane has three potential penalties, a financial fine, back of the field, or a black flag. So we'll have to see how they review it because Hinchcliffe is under review, we understand from race control. There's the leader, Scott Dixon. Simon Pagano is now three seconds behind. Pagano, Hunter Ray, and Ray Hall at Pocono. You're watching NBCSN's coverage of IndyCar, brought to you by Honda, an official vehicle of the Verizon IndyCar Series, and by Bobby Rahal Automotive Group. Visit us at bobbyrahal.com for all your automotive needs in Pennsylvania. And his driver is running in fourth right now, Graham Rahal, chasing Ryan hunter Ray, Alexander Rossi, and Scott Dixon up front as we near the midpoint of the 500 mile race at Pocono. Just four to go in the 2017 Verizon IndyCar Series Championship. That's Marco Andretti, who has recovered after a slow start in that blue and white United Fiber and Data car, working for a moment on Simon Pagano, but he lost his momentum. And here's Elio Castroneves getting back. He's been quiet for a while, but working his way back up to eighth. Marco struggling a bit the last three laps. He's lost three positions in those three laps to Canaan. Pagano and Castro Neves. Now he settles back into a pace as Hinchcliffe is charging back on Kimball. Hinchcliffe with that long pit stop, ran over the hose. There's going to be no penalty, just a monetary fine after the race is over, but he's got a long way to catch up to Dixon now. And to clarify, it is a penalty, but it's a fine. They have three options. Let's give a shout out to this guy right here. Yeah. Captain America crashed so hard yesterday, got out of the car, spent half the night in the hospital getting x-rays, MRIs. We got word late last night, here yesterday, huge crash, boom, hits the wall, got out of the car under his own power, but couldn't put any weight on his hip. He complained immediately about his hip. They took him to the hospital, Lehigh Valley, x-rays, MRIs. We got word late, late, late last night. He's going to try to do it, and today, He's running third, coming from the back of the field. He's doing it, 138 Gs measured in the accelerometer in his earpiece. And guys, I've had 95 Gs before. I was in bed for two weeks. <laughs> well, that was this morning after the pit stop practice and the uh, systems check. And what an effort by Ryan hunter Ray for the second year in a row has charged from the back to the front. Katie? And as his team owner and a former driver, Michael can get inside the head of Ryan. What's he dealing with out there? This has got to be the best medicine for him. Oh, yeah, for sure. It's always good to get back in the car. And, uh, yeah, he feels fine physically. And, uh, you know, I think he's got a good race car, so that always makes you feel good. And what about Alexander Rossi? He's also led today, been really competitive. Can he win another 500-mile race? I hope so. Uh, one of our cars, I hope, wins it. Uh, you know, we have strong cars. We'll have to wait and see. It's such a long way to go yet them in the top three right now, Kevin. You hey guys had pretty good luck on the 500 mile race in Indianapolis, winning three of the last four. Alexander Rossi, one of those winners last year. Rossi still working on Scott Dixon as we near the midway point. Rossi popping out here at Pocono. Formula One is on NBCSN after the summer break. The boys are back next weekend. It's Vettel versus Hamilton versus Eau Rouge as the World Championship hits Belgium. That's life at the speed of Formula One. The Belgian Grand Prix next Sunday morning at 7.30 Eastern here on NBCSN. Vettel's lead on Hamilton is 14 in the championship. And what a race we have here at Pocono as we go uh -oh. past the midpoint. And James Hinchcliffe trying oh, to hang on. And somehow he does not hit the wall. How did he not hit the wall? He was completely sideways. He got passed by the Foyt car, got up in the gray, and was sideways like a dirt car all the way around the corner at 190 miles an hour. Oh, and somebody else is sideways down low. I think that was Will Power almost lost it with Takuma Sato, the wild thing to the high side. Two incredible IndyCar saves. I've never seen that in my life. Hinchcliffe with the save of the century, and then Will Power follows it up.
Look at this guy right here. During the break, he took the lead yesterday afternoon, 24 hours ago, took a 138G hit in a qualifying crash. Townsend, that's like take the hit you took when you bought that Porsche a couple weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you told me sometimes a little bit of personal pain or struggle, you, you, you end up having your best race. Why is that? Well, I think his expectations were, hey, I don't have a chance at winning. I just got to get out there. Your expectation level comes down. You're not so wound up and uptight. But, man, this guy is driving the wheels off this car. Look at this. 20 Started positions. on the back row. To the lead, he went third to first during that last break. You saw it on nonstop, and Ryan Unaray leads his teammate Alexander Rossi. Now, let's go back to what we saw with James Hinchcliffe on the top of this three wide battle. Hinch gets caught up high in the gray. Light dust and marbles. I, I just can't believe he kept it off the wall. What a save. Here we go on board again. That's yeah. Munoz down low. The in-car on the steering wheel, look at that, he's completely hands over, crossed over. <laughs> crossed hands, they call that. I've seen plenty of drivers give up at that point and just pull their hands back and take the hit, and Hinchcliffe, what a sweet move. And then while we looked at that, Rossi went back to the point as they continue to battle up front here with still nearly 250 miles to go in this 500-mile race. It's Andretti Autosport at the front, and Robin Miller, Michael Andretti's team, leads the conversation as we get really deep in this silly season. Kevin, here's the whole deal. I asked Michael, have you made a decision yet, Chevrolet or Honda for next year? He said, no, I'm getting close. We may know by gateway. So the repercussions are big. Michael wants to keep Rossi. Honda wants to keep Rossi. Hinchcliffe wants Rossi as his teammate. Chip Ganassi wants Rossi. So he's suddenly everybody's favorite flavor of the month. They all want Rossi. But if they stay with Honda, if Andretti stays with Honda, there's no reason for Rossi to leave. There's no reason for Sato to leave. So the way this thing's gonna play out is all gonna be interesting here in the next seven or eight days. And Michael is the big domino and he knows it. So I really believe him when he says he hasn't made up his mind yet, or he probably already told everybody. Well, the guy that's secure for 100% at Andretti is obviously his son, Marco. And there was no, no reason why you would ever get rid of this guy. He's your anchor driver in the team and has the, the major sponsorship with DHL. So he's your, t he's your team captain right here. So a lot more to go here as we watch Alexander Rossi lead. And look at the onboard of James Hinchcliffe makes the save of the day. Stay with us from Pocono. Welcome back to Pocono, where you see in third there, Scott Dixon and Mike Hull, his team strategist, have changed their strategy. They decided that, yes, running out front is safe, but we've burned a lot of fuel. We stopped, and there you could see, you could see the weave back and forth, which is a signal that he will pit. We thought he was going to get all the way to 110 or 11, but now still, Scott Dixon, needing to save some fuel, didn't make the numbers, and now hits pit road. So Dixon pits from third, has to lock him up again to get down to 60 miles per hour. Rossi and Hunter Ray out front. Ray Hall moves up to third now. New Garden and Kanan in the top five. Should be routine, but of course, they're going to take this opportunity again to just make sure. And they're going to do a little bit of front wing, a little bit more than I would have expected for Scott Dixon again. They know now that they need to save more fuel than this. This is 112 as he rolls out. It's going to leave him shorter with other cars having a four lap advantage on him. Could definitely play near the end. So Scott Dixon made up one lap on that stint versus his previous stint. And as Jan said, he's going to have to continue. That was 29 laps on that stint. He's going to continue to have to make 29 laps to get himself back into the strategy of guys like Rossi and Hunter Ray. Look at Ed Carpenter there trying to stay on the lead lap. He was one of the four that made contact with the wall yesterday pretty heavy contact in practice they missed getting to the tech line for qualifying by six minutes so that's why he wasn't able to qualify and had to start in the back today Rossi looking to put him a lap down here he comes I think you're gonna find that uh, Ed Carpenter is probably gonna pit it looked like he dived down a little bit there coming off the corner but no, he stays out, so these guys are good on their second lap going further. We see a car peel off in the background there. Here's Simon Pagino. He was running in seventh. 
Jones. Pagano's not making great fuel mileage either because he's been one of the early takers as well. Paul, he's felt like he just hasn't had the speed all day. They've been having trouble on pit road and not the speed out on the track either. This time they were debating on what kind of changes to make. They're actually going to make a rear wing change and fill it up with Sunoco fuel. Pretty quick stop. Rossi goes by Carpenter, who puts him a lap down. A struggling day for Carpenter, so he's going to hold up Hunter Ray here a little bit. Hopefully he gets out of the way here, lets these leaders race their own race. Another car peeling off. Looks like a Foyt car coming off the track. It's Carlos Munoz. He had worked his way up to 10th position, so a strong run for the ABC Supply. AJ Foyt team. AJ not here this weekend. Wish the best and it's been to such Anders. A, and it's been such an impressive run here for Carlos Munoz. Such a disappointing year for AJ Foyt and Carlos. Keep in mind, Carlos Munoz has finished second at the Indianapolis 500 more times than he can count. And he's so great at these tracks. And he said, despite the crap old, old qualifying we had yesterday, we're just going to keep our head down. And I'm looking forward to this race so much. And currently in the top 10. Great run. All right, here they come. The three leaders, three Hondas coming in. three consecutive stops of no changes for Alexander Rossi. They're actually, th and it's a yellow out on the track in turn one as Graham, or excuse me, that's Sebastian Saavedra, Kevin. Saavedra has stepped into the car for Michaela Lotion this weekend and next, and who was in the pit lane, and that is going to be noteworthy. Hunter Ray is going to beat out Graham Ray Hall, and then that is Tony Kanan, I think, in the blue and white car. And that's Alexander Rossi. So all of those, those three will jump Rossi under this yellow. And there's Savedra. He's come to a stop. So for the moment, we have not seen Newgarden, Castro Neves, Marco Andretti Pitts. Go back again to see what happened to Sebastian Saavedra. Very similar to his teammate, yeah. James Hinchcliffe, gets high into the gray and pretty heavy impact. Saved it once and then it hooked back into the wall and the right rear walloped as we get another angle on board. Same deal as Hinchcliffe. And he just got high. Car coming out of the pits. Munoz coming out of the pits. He got in high, got in the gray, and the front end was gone. So he was just a passenger. As we see right here, the right rear guy had a problem, the tire Ooh. took off on him, so he had to go chasing after it. That that would be a penalty if it got away from the box. Wow, what a, what a disaster of a stop there for the Andretti guys. Luckily though for Rossi, he's on pit lane when the yellow yeah. comes out, and so the cars that haven't pitted will cycle to the back when they do stop under yellow. The yellow actually hurts Ed Jones and J.R. Hildebrand, both of whom had, had, had achieved great fuel mileage on the last stint. Now that all resets, Jan? And Townsend, very interesting. As you say, every car that was on pit road, that's a huge advantage, but also anyone who's also stopped, which of course would include Scott Dixon. So if you happen to come in prior, now when everyone peels into pit road, you pick up those track positions. So stopping early today sometimes is a detriment, but work for Scott Dixon this time. Yeah, this is like a road course where those that have stayed out are severely disadvantaged. So Joseph Newgarden, Elio Castroneves, Marco Andretti who have been running in the top seven or eight, they're going to fall back behind those that have already stopped. Yeah, luckily there's only eight or nine cars that did stop, so they won't fall back too far as that whole crew that hasn't pitted now comes on pit lane. Well, Marco's actually been struggling all day long. He just ha doesn't have the speed that his teammates Ryan Hunter Ray and Alexander Rossi did, so you see him pull into his pit box there. We're looking for just a half turn out of front wing, Young. Yes, and the two Penske cars, two of the Penske cars, did obviously not make that cut. So there's an inter-team rivalry here to see who's going to get out first. Looks to me like Castro Neves rolls first and gets that position. Look how quick he launched out of there. Castro Neves, Newgarden. And then and third ready. in line is Marco, then James Hinchcliffe, and J.R. Hildebrand, who's had a pretty decent day today. And a more little changes. longer stop for Charlie Kimball. Yeah, more changes for Charlie. He was in the pits early in the race making changes. He just made a front wing change. Big crowd here today. And they've been entertained. We have had eight different leaders. 
Right now it's up for grabs after the yellow flag. Back to back to back weekends for IndyCar. Next week, the final oval of the season and IndyCar is back near St. Louis at Gateway. Join us next Saturday night, nine o'clock coverage. This is from the last time in 2003. Elio Castroneves wins over Tony Kanaan. Scott Dixon dominated that race, but it was Elio winning over TK. Those are the only three from that race that are in this race. Paul Trace, Paul Tracy, you won the inaugural race there in 1997. Yeah, and my uh, my partner right here, Townsend Bell, won in lights over a three-time champion, Scott Dixon. Four-time. Four-time champion. And they've done a lot of work at that track. They have repaved entirely for IndyCar to come back and great reports uh, of the test there recently. So kudos to all of the staff at Gateway. And we are excited to be back for IndyCar on a short oval coming up next Saturday night. All right, under caution here, just the second of the day at Pocono. Still a lot of racing to go in this 500-mile race. And Ryan hunter Ray has moved back to the front. Graham Rahal, Tony Kanaan, Scott Dixon, and Alexander Rossi are the top five. I'll tell you what's going to happen now with 80 to go. There's going to be these restarts are going to become critical. These guys are just going to go crazy on these restarts, Anders. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Cra crazy racing here, but standing with, with Sam Schmidt. And Sam, big change of the drivers here. And uh, Sebastian Saavedra looked so solid, but then had that impact with the wall. Uh, what are you thinking after that? We were actually having a few problems before that. Uh, uh, just uh, complete lack of grip and kept making adjustments, and it wasn't going anywhere. And then we had uh, uh, dropping water pressure, so we were just deciding whether to bring him in. It'll be interesting to see uh, when the car gets back whether we actually had a leak that contributed to it. But... Uh, He's done a great job and uh, been consistent all weekend and moving his way forward. And had it as high as 12th there for a while, so uh, really disappointing because I knew he was looking for a good run, but uh, we'll go on to Gateway. Sebastian Saavedra will be back with the team at Gateway, Jan. Enrico Nald, of course, on the radio to Graham Rahal. You obviously caught a huge break here pitting, but you also have been running strong. As a single car team, it's so tough, but now have you hit the sweet spot? Yeah, Graham's really happy with the car. You know, the, the Honda's running strong. You know, we're really happy to represent the Bobby Ray Hall Automotive Group here and trying to maintain their level of excellence. Graham's doing a great job, and I think, um, you know, long race still to go, but I think we have a good chance to give, a, give the fight to him. All right, they've been adjusting on this car back and forth at each one of these pit stops. Graham Ray Hall been working with his team, and every time he makes a pit stop, this car gets faster. Welcome back to the Pocono 500, sponsored by ABC. And for ABC, A.J. Foyt's not here this weekend. He ran over some trees. He hurt his leg. It swelled up. And happy birthday to Parnelly Jones, the oldest living Indy winner at the age of 84 years old. Kevin, let's go racing. All right. Munoz is up to seventh. That would be the best result that either of those cars have had this season. Back at it at Pocono Raceway. Ryan Hunter Ray leading Graham Rahal, Tony Kanaan, Scott Dixon, and Alexander Rossi. Rahal pops to the bottom in that red car, trying to challenge Hunter Ray for the lead as they head to turn one and then popping to the outside. That's Tony Kanaan. Marco Andretti having a look up the inside. Oh, that's Scott Dixon, Dixon. for the back of the blue and white car. He looked at Hunter Ray and then wisely backed out. Fourth to first. He's not concerned about this fuel mileage and how many laps. He made the outside move, but it looked like. Uh, Ray Hall was all over the back of Hunter Ray coming up to the green, but Dixon timed that with perfection. But look at Ray Hall coming back. It's the oh. second time that Tony Kanaan has gone from third to first on a restart, but he might not lead the lap because Graham Ray Hall goes back underneath him. He got the old Pruitt fade from, from Dixon. He pushed him down to the bottom of the track on the grass. Look at these guys coming off here, three, four wide at the back. So it's Ray Hall, Kanan, Hunter Ray, Rossi, Dixon, Munoz, Pagano. Wow, who's that running up high? I think that's Max Chilton. Several cars have been in trouble up there. Three laps down. Trying to make something happen to get some laps back as Castro Neves gets by Connor Daly. Power down there on the outside. He's still a lap down. Hasn't been able to get back on. No, he is I back think on, he is the on the lead, lead lap. lap. So he's back to the lead laps. So now he's got an opportunity to come back through the field. And he's a little bit off sequence because he topped off late during that caution. So keep an eye on Will Power. If his car is good, he might be able to make his way back through the field. I'm mistaken. That was not Dixon. It was Kanan that took the lead on the outside. I thought it was Dixon, but Dixon right now currently P5. 
Well, we gave the shout out to AJ Foyt. His cars were doing pretty well, worked out well with the timing oh. of the yellow, and a big crash. It's Hinchcliffe, and it's J.R. Hildebrand. You okay, bud? It is Hildebrand. Hildebrand and Hinchcliffe into the wall hard. Yeah. We're in one affair. I'm fucked. Sorry, guys. Apologies after the major, major impacts. Small fire there coming out of Jamie Hinchcliffe's cars. Both of these cars really tore up on the right side or the left side of both cars. So looks like they probably made contact and did both a half spin. After four crashes, three of them big yesterday. Well, we like had avoided any massive contact today, but this is significant. Good to see JR climbing out. And they're working on James Hinchcliffe. It was like I said, with 80 to go now, these restarts are going to become absolutely frantic. Guys are going to want to make moves, and these cautions are going to breed more cautions. And good to see Hinchcliffe getting out under his own power as well. Nasty, nasty crash. Let's take a look at what happens here. Hinchcliffe on the inside, down low on Hildebrand. Kind of just a racy and deal. One guy was coming down, the other guy was coming up just a little bit. They barely touched, and yeah. both of them in the wall. Hinchcliffe square on the back attenuator. Hinchcliffe had a little bit of space to the yellow line, but probably didn't want to get too close to the apron. Meanwhile, Hildebrand doesn't really want to run too high because as we've seen already, if you get up in that gray, you won't finish the corner. So let's walk on, watch on board with Hinch here. Oh, hard hit. Yeah, it was just really one of those racing deals. It was a pretty late attempt by Hinchcliffe to kind of put it in there that late. He was only at his back wheel, and, you know. Yeah. Hildebrand was going for the line. You don't want to get too high and get in the gray, and Hinchcliffe was kind of just stuffing it in there really late. I agree with you, Paul. Plus, you know, Hinch is following some cars into the corner, and you really trust that the room is going to be there if you make a move that late. And with dirty air in front from the car ahead, you're going to have some understeer and undoubtedly slide up the track a bit. You could hear Hinchcliffe was out of the throttle trying to make the front end work, but. You know, that's one of the things that Pocono Raceway has done. They've made massive facility improvements in the last few years, and virtually the entire outside and most of the inside retaining walls are covered by safer barrier. Now, only Indianapolis and Daytona have more safer barrier than they have and here at Pocono. Kevin, so, th th here work. you can see it. I love the history of this. Look at this. This is the original barrier of Pocono Raceway. I think Paul's uh, boiler visited plate. that boilerplate boiler back plate. in the day. And then here's the concrete wall that uh, was the new development bef after the boilerplate. And then you see the safer barrier here with these foam inserts. That's the safer barrier. And back in the day when this was here, there was no chain link. If you went up in the air, you exited stage right and out of the stadium, as they say. So some have taken the chance to make a quick pit stop. And we've seen that and we heard that earlier that there was some concern about that rear wing pod and we saw it flapping around during the last stop so team penske is going to take the opportunity on right here to change that yes because he got himself back on the lead lap this is not really a problem for track position so go ahead and take this opportunity because he's been complaining he needs more rear downforce so he has a new rear section stays on that same lap and so this could be exactly what Will Power needs now to try and take a charge from the back. We've seen it once by more than one driver. I like that strategy. Fix the car, take the fuel, and most importantly, I think, get a fresh set of tires. You're going to be four laps fresher than anybody else in the field. Hey, Townsend, I just noticed something. The reason that he had problem with the rear section here, he's been hit from behind. You can see the imprint of a front wing in that back clip. So we did hear, remember that time we saw him get super sideways? He was on the radio saying he got hit. Well, there's visual evidence he did get hit. Katie? Hit, Jan, actually came from Charlie Kimball who came in to change his front nose because when James Hinchliffe got sideways, he's the one that ran into the back of Will Power. Well, we have their teammates back here in 17th and 15th, New Garden and Power, so. So on the hook, James Hinchcliffe, J.R. Hildebrand, one more look, third caution here at Pocono, and a massive hit.
Hi, everyone. I'm Scott Hoke in Monterey, California. Coming up after the race, we will have continuing coverage of Mika Monterey with all kinds of amazing cars, including this 2012 Porsche 911 GT3 Cup car, one of only five commemorative editions built for 2012 to commemorate that fabulous and legendary Brumos race team. We'll have that car and much more coming up next. Scott, sign us up. How many can we get of those? Is that the one you bought, Townsend? No, but I want to race in that 2012 GT3 Cup car. And someone sent me a picture. I had a Lotus, uh, former Townsend Bell Lotus GT2 car on sale there. So expensive, though. They wanted 250 grand. Well, good stuff coming up after we're done and plenty more to come here. And there is the rear wing assembly of Will Power. Changed during this caution for the Hinchcliffe and J.R. Hildebrand crash, or third of the day on lap 125. So watch for Will Power, 16th position, but a whole car again. And he was one of those that had been running up at the front. Now running in second is Graham Rahal. Paul, you're going to try to talk to him. I'm going to try. Hey, Graham, uh, Paul Tracy, can you hear me? Yeah, I'm copy, PT. How you doing, bud? Hey, buddy, you're marching forward, kind of like a, I kind of see like a California Speedway, Texas, but you're in position way early. Normally, you're right there at the end, so uh, you obviously got your car better. Yeah, you know, I think our guys have done a good job in the pits, making the right adjustment. Uh, the car was significantly better than yesterday, obviously, and, uh, you know, we're able to be in the hunt here, but, you know, we'll, uh, we'll see. I think Hunter Ray looks good. Obviously, Dixie looks good. Uh, you know, Canon's leading and. Uh, you can never forget about those pesky penskies. So, uh, you know, we'll just have to see what happens here. Yeah, it looks like these uh, these restarts are going to get pretty wild. So we'll let you get after. You had a nice restart last run, but uh, be careful. Yeah, but it's going to get crazy here a little bit. But hopefully we can have a nice, uh, long, safe run to the finish here for everybody. All right, good luck. It's going to get crazy. It's been pretty crazy. Robin, go ahead. Hinch. You're all right. What happened? A racing accident or everybody ran out of room? Yeah, I, just, I think a racing deal. You know, um, a bunch of guys were kind of too wide there, and I was on the inside of JR, and, you know, I was talking to him in there. He said he got a little bit loose, and it didn't really matter. He kind of put a bunch of wheel. Sorry, he got, got a bunch of understeer, put a bunch of wheel into it, and it kind of pitched him sideways and moved him down into me. So uh, it's just, just you know, ultimately it's it's my fault because we shouldn't have been back there. You know, I made that mistake on pit road, and uh, I'm so sorry for the boys. They had a killer first stop, got us in the top five. We ran away to the front. We were just kind of... Just cruising, man. We were having a really good race, and uh, I screwed up in the pits, put us back there. We started making some moves, and I had an unbelievable sideways moment coming up. Oh, no, you had a sprint car moment, son. That was one of the – Townsend Bell says the save of the year. Well, yeah, we were uh, – I, I was at Grandview Speedway on Thursday. I was learning some tips from those guys, so thank God I did that. But, um, like I said, we shouldn't have been back there. I, uh, I feel bad for the boys. They, they deserved a solid probably podium finish today, and um, we are having fun running up there. And Yeah, we'll regroup and uh, move on to Gateway. Thanks, kid. JR, you're all right, brother. Uh, Hinch said you guys were talking, you got a little loose, maybe? Yeah, I just, you know, it, we were running down in there too wide, and uh, the cars in front of us spread out and went too wide. So as soon as that happened, I got a bunch of push right away. So I fed wheel in, and, you know, Hinch was, Hinch was down on the bottom, so it sort of hooked up. And, um, you know, I just wasn't leaving enough room for all of that to be going on and, and him to be down there. So, um, you know, we were fighting the car a little bit all day, but the guy's been doing a good job. We've make, been making good fuel economy. So um, just frustrating to have it have it end that way and, and a bummer to have taken out Hinch, um, you know, with that, with that incident. It looked like your car came to life like midway through the first or second stint, and then it kind of fell back. Yeah, you know, we were we were good for for periods. We were really good through turn one. Um, just couldn't quite get it dialed in through through three. So we were losing a lot of time um, and a lot of speed, particularly off the corner in three. Um, and we were, you know, trying to kind of find it as we went along. We were tuning the car, you know, kind of in and out, but uh, it just wasn't quite there. Hopefully, it, it you know, maybe it would have been. Towards the end, it felt, felt pretty good for the first couple laps on new tires. But, um, yeah, just a, a really unfortunate way to, to end what's been a tough weekend. But, you know, we've been able to get through these things so far this year. So I uh, feel bad for the Fuzzies Vodka boys. Thanks, kid. Kevin. Paul, when's right. the last time you've heard two drivers both take yeah. responsibility and, and almost apologize? Well, they're buddies with each other. They've raced each other a long time and lights and all kinds of stuff. So they, uh, 
both uh, not trying to step on each other's toes. Going back to green next time by, but let's check our Chevy driver profile. Gabby Chavez in his third race of the year for a new team, Harding Racing, a paving company out of Indianapolis. Mike Harding has put together a good program with Larry Curry running it. They are looking good to be full-time next year, maybe even a second car. As soon as this is over, I'm going to update my driver resume with competitive drone pilot because that's clearly thing, huh? that's what they're looking for in the series <laughs> these days. Chavez has had two good runs, ninth at Indianapolis, fifth at Texas. It's been tough sledding for him today. He's the last car in the lead lap running in 17th. Also want to mention Connor Daly in 14th. He's worked his way up to ninth through that pit sequence, but he was penalized at a drive through right as the crash was happening for taking more service than allowed during a closed pit. All right, that's Tony Kanan up front. Graham Ray Hall in the red car. Ryan Hunter Ray, the yellow and red car. Then Alexander Rossi running in fourth position. Kanan, Hunter Ray, Rossi, and then Dixon in fifth have all led a lot of laps. Simon Pagano in sixth, back up through the gears. Still a lot of racing to go, and here we go again from Pocono. Oh, a lot of defensive driving going on. Look at Hunter Ray, Graham Ray Hall shoving it up the inside. Ray Hall going for the lead. Hunter Ray trying to come with him, and Ray Hall is in front. Ray Hall, really strong restart. He takes the lead. We'll see how long he wants to hang on to it, but these guys, like I said, it's going to get real racy from here out. We've still got a long way to go, but you can see there's more urgency in these guys now. And on trying to come back. I think he will. Problem is you get bogged down right there in the middle of the corner, and Hunter Ray will have a nice run now coming off the corner on Ray Hall. Rossi now has recovered after that stop. He's now in fourth right behind his teammate, ready to pop out right here. There he goes. Oh, boy. Rossi to the inside. Waited till the last second. Nice move from Alexander Rossi. Hunter Ray goes back to fourth. And now here comes Scott Dixon. Dixon pops to the inside, and he will get that position. That is for fourth. You can see these guys now, Townsend, they're making more aggressive passes. They're, wait, they're doing it later into the, into the corner, waiting until the last second to pop out. And, that's and guys are not wanting to back off. Graham Rahal taking the lead there on the pack straightaway. Graham Rahal, this is the best 500-mile race he's had. Strong race car and a strong drive. He has won two super speedway races, including at Fontana, but he has been strong all day here today. That's the championship as it stands at the moment. Scott Dixon, the current leader, but there is a long way to go here. We started the day with top four separated by 17. They just swapped positions around a little bit. We rocketed through the first 100 laps. Kanan now coming back into turn three right here. So we rocketed through the first 100 laps. It's all slowed down a little bit with these two yellows, but hopefully these guys can keep it all together here. Nice, clean racing going on. It looks like you just can't keep anybody behind you. It's hard. Now, speaking of somebody behind, Joseph Newgarden came in the points leader, currently runs back in 11th. He opted to pit on that last yellow. Look at that wings, those wings moving around like we've been talking about. Yeah, big vibration. But with Newgarden back there, what that does for Graham Rahal, he currently sits about 40 points out of the lead. So that points championship is only tightening up. And look at Power now making a move on Marco Andretti. Fresh tires, a car that's fixed, and here's another pass for the lead. Ray Hall back to the inside of Kanan as they continue to go back and forth here at Pocono. And we saw Power. That was really the first position he had gotten. So he has not carved them up since this pit stop. That position on Andretti only got him to 15th. Passes for the lead two times a lap since the restart. So these guys are getting after it. Yeah, and guys, keep in mind, TK's been so strong at the beginning of each stint. He's very, very happy with the car early on, but then as the run goes on, he tends to fade a little bit. And you just see how strong he is through the middle of the corner. He can place the car elsewhere. He's going anywhere he wants. He's going for the lead. Already nine lead changes today. Nine different leaders, I should say, and 25 lead changes. The record is 33 and 12 different leaders, both two years ago here at Pocono. Another interesting thing to note as we look out the back of Graham Rahal is this is the last time 
will be seeing the Honda and Chevy Super Speedway Aero Kits. This is the swan song. They go to spec body work next year. You'll still have Honda and Chevrolet engines, but everybody will be on the same bodywork. And the testing has gone very well so far, and the feeling is that they'll race even better. I'm not sure how you can race much better than this as Graham Rahal goes back to the front around Tony Kanaan. Not sure these guys are doing this by design or they or they just really want to lead. So obviously fuel mileage is going to be critical here getting to the end of the race and getting to that last pit window as we got two two by two here. Newgarden trying to thread the middle right here with his teammate. Two Penske's very anxious. Newgarden and Will Power trying to get back into the mix at the front of the field. They have to be careful that they have a chance with moves like that. That was getting way out of hand. Well, I mentioned Power hadn't made up a lot of ground, but he's starting to charge now. For a moment, he was in the 12th position. He's trying to get back to 13th right now. Here's Kanan again to the front. Rossi thinks about going with him. It's Kanan, Rahal, Rossi, Dixon, and Hunter Ray at Pocono. It's an all Honda show at the front. The first Chevy is Pagano in sixth place. We've got Andretti cars up front, Rossi, Hunter Ray, and we have Dixon in the mix, Kanan, and the two Ganassi cars with, with uh, Dixon and Kanan. Rossi had an issue there. Now he falls back into the clutches of his teammate, Ryan Hunter Ray. That is a pass for fourth position. Dixon got Rossi first, then Hunter Ray will follow to go into fourth. And here's Graham Rahal popping down to the bottom once again. Turn three is the spot for these guys. They get a nice run and like getting off a of two. Both of these guys have been passing each other going into turn three. I think you work, you work the car in front through turn one. You draft up, stay close through the, sh the, the shortest radius corner, turn two, and then that gives you a shot going into three. And look at the entire field, 17 deep, separated by under eight seconds. Going to be a heck of a finish. Here, another run by Kanan. You see that same move. He's going to stay close in two, tuck down low, and here he is. He's going to make the move into three. This is every lap. These guys have been passing each other for the lead. So and this is like they're not, a few years ago. They're not holding each other up because they're not falling into the clutches of Dixon. Now you got to start thinking about the end of this race and how you're going to work the strategy to make sure you're the last one that makes a pass. So plenty more to come, and this is going to be interesting. Might we see something like this? Remember Graham Rahal winning at Fontana two years ago. He finished under the yellow, but it was wild throughout. What's in store today at Pocono? Thirty-four different lead changes in the IndyCar 500-mile race. The ABC Supply 500 from Pocono Raceway. You saw several more in non-stop. Tony Kanaan leading right now, going back and forth with Graham Rahal. Ryan Hunter Ray there in the yellow DHL car is lurking in third position. Scott Dixon and Elio Castroneves is back up to the top five. And no, Carlos Munoz is hanging in there. He got a break with the timing of the yellow. He is in seventh right behind Simon Pagano. And Paul, all that, that passing into turn three tells me that at the end of this race, I don't think you want to lead to start the last lap. I think you want to be in second to pull that move off and it won't give the other guy a chance at the line. No, I think the way you've got to position, this is turning into almost like a Talladega, Daytona style, uh, you know, draft race. So these guys have got to get it set up. I don't think you want to be leading going into the last lap, that's for sure. We saw Ed Jones there for a moment as Graham Rahal goes back to the front for our 35th lead change. But Ed Jones, who was so strong at Indianapolis with a third place finish. Wasn't particularly quick yesterday, but the rookie is learning as he goes, and he's now running in ninth position. Just got around the pole center to Kumasato. There's Jones right there for Dale Coyne Racing. Really solid, look at that, currently ninth. It's been as high as third. Dale Coyne was so strong in Indianapolis. Even after Bourdais' crash, James Davison stepped in, was very fast, and Jones was quick. And this is the point in the tire stand. I think we're about three or four laps from most of these guys pitting. I saw Graham Rahal start to wiggle a bit. Last time this yeah. happened, there goes Kanan back to the front. Last lap for Graham Rahal was almost 215 miles an hour with a pass for the lead. So these guys are not going slow by any means. 
It's a record number of lead changes today at Pocono Raceway for IndyCar. That was the 36th, 33 the previous mark two years ago. On board with our Firestone telemetry for Graham Ray Hall. A little downshift there going into turn one. He'll make probably an upshift in between turns two and three right here. He's got drafting up. Breathed it a little bit. He's going to nope, back didn't, out. Didn't have it. I think that's the first time they haven't made a pass since the restart. Well, he knows he can do it. And I think he's smart to save it. Just study, make the adjustments in the cockpit to practice. Got a car in the pit lane. I don't know if that's Dixon. It is Scott Dixon. Scott Dixon rolling down the pit lane. So he's the first of the leaders to come in, Jan. Yes, and of course, remember, there's that four lap deficit that he has. Now, of course, he's well within the window now. All that caution period, it's not going to be a problem with getting him to the end. He'll just be stopping before the others. 7.7 .7 seconds. I saw no visible changes for wing, but of course, they can do a little bit of tire pressure. Scott Dixon will be a good spot. Remember how he had an advantage doing that earlier in the race as Graham Rahal goes back to the front. I think it's been an advantage for him to pit, or, pit early. He's been had a clear pit lane. He could concentrate on getting in the pit, breaking late, not sliding into the into the speed limit zone, and not having traffic around. So that has clearly been an advantage for him. So after this shakes out, as we see Sato coming, let's see if he can r retain the lead again. I think that was a great point that you'd like to pit with an open pit lane because we've seen some really busy work on pit lane, Jan. Yes, and Takuma Sato has been struggling with understeer all day. In fact, they're going to add two turns of front wing this time. You can see that delays the stop slightly. Still trying to get this car balanced. Well, we know it can be fast. He won the pole as the last one to go out yesterday with two blistering laps. And now pit lane starts to get busy. And here are some of the leaders. Graham Rahal and Tony Kanan are coming in. For the moment, Ryan Hunter Ray is in front, Anders. And Tony Kanan is just going to add one other half of front wing here. He's super happy with the car, and he feels like the car has really come to him as the temperatures have cooled down out here at Pocono Raceway. He couldn't be happier, Katie. Simon Pagano has worked his way to the front, but he doesn't feel like he has the speed to lead. No changes for him on this stop, Jan. And for Graham Rahal, as you can see, Side-by-side -side action, Graham lost a little bit of time. That was 9.3 seconds. One of the tires seemed like it took longer than the fuel, and he paid the price as far as track position. Look at Elio Castroneves back, out, back up there in second, but he is one of those that's going to dip down to pit lane this time. Ryan hunter Ray remains on track in the lead. It's been a solid run here for Carlos Munoz so far, just staying out of trouble. Keep in mind just how bad they've been in qualifying so far, but in the race, they've been charging to the front, looking on track here for a solid top 10 finish. Jan? For Castro Neves, he has been quietly working his way towards the front. That was a very quick stop, 6.8 seconds. That's one of the lowest we've seen here later in the stages when the fuel flows not as quickly. We've had over 500 passes now in this race, and let's watch Castro Neves come back out. Here comes Graham Rahal and Tony Kanan. So Rahal got just in front of Scott Dixon there, who runs behind Rahal, and there's Tony Kanan in third, coming up around the Foyt car of Munoz, and there's Simon Pagino, who did really well on that cycle of stops. But Dixon has moved from about fourth or fifth up to second now, so far out of this, out of this pit stop exchange. That's Kanan back there working on Elio Castroneves on the warmer Firestones, and he'll get that position. Hunter Ray still is the leader. He's yet to make his next to last pit stop. And Will Power has cycled up to second. Ed Jones third, Alexander Rossi in fourth. So these are your effective leaders of the guys who have pitted. So here, here's the leader Hunter Ray in now. What an incredible day for Ryan Hunter Ray as he comes down pit lane. We'll watch him and wait for him to pull into his pit box. He is going to go for an adjustment on both his front wing and his rear wing. This is crucial for Ryan Hunter Ray. As you see, Tony Kanan going back to the lead, and Ryan Hunter Ray is down and away. Super clean stop with wing adjustment, 7.7, .7, so that was nice and clean. Now here comes the good action. The blend, Ryan Hunter Ray, what a stop that was. He's gonna cycle up, he's not up to speed. The field's at 220 miles an hour on the front straight. They'll catch him at the exit of one, but I think he might hold the lead. 
Here I'm comes Kanan. Here comes Ray Hall behind him. Look at Hunter Ray go low. He's defending. He's saying, you can pass me on the inside or outside. It looks like the inside. Scott That's Dixon, Dixon goes actually. By. It's Dixon who got around, and now Rossi is in, Katie. And he has fallen back during the middle of that stint. The car was sliding around a lot. They made a change on that last stop that just didn't work for Alex, and they went back on that adjustment. So that early pit stop right now looks like it's put Dixon back in the lead. That clean pit, pit lane, braking the way you want to break, not having to worry about other guys. We'll see Rossi come out. Dixon's going to swallow him up right on the entry of turn one. Oh, Rossi's going to be under fire here. There goes Graham Rahal to the high side. And I think what we saw, guys, with Dixon was he was saving fuel early. Now he's fine on fuel, and they've unleashed Scott Dixon to go for it. Look at Kanan now. Peak to the bottom of Graham Rahal, can't get it right there. Kanan's job now as the team team player for him is to get himself up into second place and protect Scott Dixon. Whoa. So as he slides by Rahal with a brave pass, what his job is next is to get in front of Ryan Hunter Ray and play protector for his team leader. That was a good old fashioned Saturday night slide job. Look at Rossi making a late, late move three wide. Rossi on the bottom, Castroneves in the middle, and wisely, Ray Hall is going to back out there. Here comes Munoz. The top five still need to make their final pit. It's Power, Newgarden, Andretti, Daly, and Chavez, or I should say they're next to the last pit stop. They have not made this stop. So it's really Dixon as the effective leader of this race. Pagano coming back around Ray Hall. So Ray. Graham has been battling for the lead, but losing some spots right here. His momentum got killed in turn one, and you just lose positions. So we've got Dixon out front, Hunter Ray in, sex in, in second, Kanan now chasing him down. He wants to get to second to protect his teammate. And all of the leaders still need to do one more pit stop. Right now, the top five have to do two more stops. You won't miss anything in nonstop. Stay with us as the action continues for IndyCar at Pocono. And there's been a major turn of events here at Pocono Raceway. Will Power had been in the lead, had just turned the fastest lap of the race. He was a little bit off sequence because he had topped off during a caution. He's just taken his pit stop. And look at this, he's come back out in front. And that's the biggest lead that we've seen anybody have all day. Late, long run, fast laps, turned the fastest lap of the race, the lap before he was gonna pit. And that has put him into almost a five second lead here. And he's back on to the strategy of the other cars. Everybody will have to make one more stop. And, and an advantage he has is he'll need to take a little less fuel than everybody, That's right? correct. And if you have these guys back here just passing each other every lap, back and forth and back and forth, he could stay out front and just stay in that clean air. You're right, Kanan and Dixon, Rossi, Castroneves, they need to think smart right now, which is basically stay single file. As long as Kanan's car is quick enough over a single lap, it behooves the rest of these guys to stay in line, just, just make sure they catch power. Well, this is somewhat how Will Power won this race last year. He was generally in fourth or fifth all race, but it was the last pit stop under green that he used quick in and out laps to jump out to the front, and then he got the break of Ryan Hunter Ray having the power issue when they were battling for the lead. Jan, what do you know? Well, this situation with Will Power, it's just so interesting that when you have an issue, you never want to give up, and it's the opportunity that each time you have a caution and you don't have to worry about track position, just keep working on it. You saw how many pieces of this car they changed. They've changed the front wing. They changed the rear complete section of this car. They made wing adjustments in between, and then they stopped, I believe, four times under caution at the end to make sure they had the latest possible window for fuel, and now that's paying off. Great point, Jan. I think the damage to the rear wing of Will Power also was causing a lot of drag, so his straight line speed has picked up a lot. Watching the lap times, Will Power does a 42.2 second lap, and Kanan 42.2, so that gap is not closing. Battle for six there. Ryan hunter -Ray and Elio Castroneves both crashed yesterday in qualifying. Both have been a factor here today. 
racing an IndyCar on a big track like this, there's not a detriment for a car to be out front with a big lead like a stock car. When you see a car out in the big lead and the pack is behind, the pack is much faster and will catch that lead car really quickly. As these guys sit here, they're passing each other and they're back and forth and back and forth. They're actually going slower than what the guy can do out front. Well, power. the difference is here at Pocono, it's very hard to stay full throttle through turn three there. At Indianapolis, the pack will be faster than one car on its own, but it's really not the case here at Pocono on the tricky triangle. So that's Kanan there in second, the first of the blue and white cars. His teammates got Dixon right behind him, looks to pop to the inside, then Alexander Rossi in the red, white, and blue car, and Joseph Newgarden there in the green and black car has worked his way back up to fifth. One more pit stop to go. Stay with us from Pocono Raceway for IndyCar. Will Power has overcome significant adversity in this race. He was running a lap down, then running on the lead lap at the back, but now he is at the front, and look at that advantage. It's gone back and forth for the lead all day in this 500-mile IndyCar race at Pocono, but Power leads Scott Dixon by 4.2 seconds. What's the rest of the pack thinking after they've been working in it all day? Here's another pass for position as Alexander Rossi goes below Scott Dixon for second, and then they watch how far power is in front. Well, he's been able to maintain a 4.2 second lead. This lap as he passes over the line, 213.3 miles an hour, but Rossi 215, then 211 for Dixon. So. We'll just see if they can slightly creep up on these guys and work their way back, but time's running out. We got uh, not a lot of laps left, and they got a big gap to cut down. It's Ryan hunter Ray making a move on Castro Neves. Castro Neves had to be very careful, and it cost him down the back straightaway as Pagano, his teammate, also made a pass. hunter Ray in sixth, Pagano in seventh, Castro Neves in eighth. So the Penske cars are all running together, except up front, Will Power, and at one point, I remember it was one through five for Honda. The Chevrolet driver update sees Will Power in front. First, fifth, seventh, eighth, ninth. Still a good mix between Honda and Chevy, but it's Chevy in control right now. They've won one more race this season than Honda has as this manufacturer battle continues. You know, it was only a couple of races ago in Toronto. We got the pole sitter in here not having a good day, but a couple of races ago, Will Power said, look, I'm out of the championship. We got no chance now, as we see Kanan or Dixon go by Rossi. And then he put himself back in the picture with that solid finish at Mid-Ohio. Right now, if it were to finish, he'd pull himself back only to 36 points behind the leader. So Sato should be in the window to make that his final stop. He can go the rest of the way. And look at power blow by him. The warm Firestones. Smart move, I think, for Sato, because if a yellow does come out, uh -huh. he'll go right to the front. Wouldn't that be fun to see Sato restart from the lead? Well, this is like a road course. You want to make your last stop as soon as you can. Katie? And Kevin, early on, earlier on in the race, we thought that Alexander Rossi might be the car to beat today. He came over the radio just now, and he is not so confident that's the truth. I feel like we might be too slow to win it, guys. And right after that, his strategist, Rob Edwards, came over the radio and said, we just need you to focus forward. He's still in the chase, third right now. That's Scott Dixon ahead of him and Tony Kanaan right behind him. Still think Rossi has a very strong car at the end of the stint, and depending on where the rest of the leaders decide to pit, you know, I think the guys at the, that, at the end of it, uh, you know, come the end of the race. So I, I think he's got a shot. I think the guys that did some changes on the last stop, like Hunter Ray, I, I got to believe that he took some downforce and drag off, and he really hasn't been a factor again since he's done that. He's been kind of stuck in sixth place where he was up there battling for the lead. So I still got to think downforce here, getting through the corner and being able to stay close is king. But we'll keep an eye on the last pit stops for everyone if they do make a downforce adjustment. Some people might add if they need it, and some people think need to trim out, need to find the speed for the finish. 25 to go in this 500-mile race at Pocono. And Will Power in front by now 3.3 seconds, but if he wins this, it would be number 32. 
And he would pass two heavyweights, Dario Franchitti and Paul Tracy, who both won 31 races in their career. That last lap for, for Power was a 213.8. Again, he's been consistent, 213.8, but Dixon a 215.3, so, and a 215 for Rossi. So they are starting to claw down that lead. It was 4.2 seconds, now three seconds. While they are gaining, Power is just hoping for no caution. Green flag pit stops, green flag racing. Try to catch me if you can. The only, the only thing that he's got going for him here is that if Sato gets in the mix with these guys and starts to race, Dixon comes to the pits. So he's going to be the second and the first of the leaders to make his final stop. Scott Dixon getting down to 60 miles per hour. We've talked about how important these stops are. This will be the most important because it's the final stop for Scott Dixon, bar a caution. They want to be as fast as they possibly can. They might not need all the fuel. That's just over eight seconds for Scott Dixon. We'll see the others on pit road shortly, I'm sure. Guy on the outside rear looked a little bit late compared to the others, so that wasn't as slick as most of his other stops. There comes Will Power to pit lane. So this race after this stop is going to give us a real indication. The leader, Will Power, taking his final stop. This will be very interesting because, you know, Will Power was here not that long ago. He wants to protect himself, get some new tires, make a slight change on the wing, but this should not need all the fuel for certain. This should be very, very quick. There's that little bit of wing change. He's in the window, Jan, so he's got to protect himself in case of the yellow, because if he got caught a yellow, he'd go to the back of the field again, and it's too late for that. Scott Dixon is passing the start-finish line right now for the effective lead of this race. Power well in front. Dixon has a lap more warmth on the Firestones, but I don't think he has anything for Will Power right now as we see Simon Pagano head down the pit lane. So Pagina will make his final stop. Rossi is the leader right now, followed by Kanan, Newgarden, Hunter Ray, and Castro Neves. They and many others still need to make their final pit stop. The effective leader is right now in 12th, and that's Will Power. And remember, it was about a three-second gap for Power back to Dixon and then Rossi. So we'll have to see how that gap ends up after Rossi cycle through on a, cycles through on a stop as Pagano comes back out. Pagano comes out, really has not been a factor today like his teammate Powers come from now the back to the front. He's really kind of admired. So we see Castro Neves, who's also really not been a factor all day. These guys have been seventh to 10th all day. Power and Dixon got by Pagano. So those are the three leaders that have made their final stop. Jan, here comes Elio for the last time. Yes, again, the pressure on the crews to try and get this done as quickly as possible. We heard that Will Power actually was calling to trim out. That's why we saw the wing change for him. That was lightning fast, 6.8 seconds for Castro Neves. Now we're getting into a window where they don't need much fuel at all. Would anyone think about not changing tires? 15 to 20 laps is a long way to go in yeah. a super speedway. All right, Tony Kanaan is also coming down as we're on board with Graham Rahal, Anders. And Tony Kanaan just needs to clean stop here. Again, he's so happy with the cars on the opening stint, so just the fresh set of tires to Snoko Fuel, and he'll be on his way here, guys. From 21st to 4th, it's been an incredible day for Ryan hunter Ray after a vicious crash yesterday. No changes for him on this final stop. And for Graham Rahal, let's see how he cycles. We see Kanaan go by. There goes Ryan hunter Ray. 9.9 .9 seconds there for Graham Rahal, slightly longer in that same track position. And there goes Will Power. Scott Dixon is by. Rossi is in the lead now. Newgarden, Newgarden is now taking lead. Rossi in the pit lane. And after dominating early on in the race, Alexander Rossi is really unsure if he can win it now. Let's see if it's a clean stop for him. It's a crucial last one. It's clean and he's down and away, Kevin. That's a good stop for Alexander Rossi. So we'll get a look at him. I think it's going to be very difficult for him as Will Power is now on the main straightaway. Big and burnout. He is going to zoom by him, but can maybe Rossi settle in there and pick up some positions? That's Power going by on the high side. 
What about Scott Dixon coming next? Big burnout, but I didn't see any wing change on that Rossi car. He wanted less downforce, so I he has cycled out into second right now. Can he chase down the leader as Newgarden's in? I think, Rossi did, I think Rossi did really well on that cycle of stops. Final stop for Joseph Newgarden. Right on the marks again. These are the cars that won't necessarily need all the fuel. We'll see if they, they've made so many wins. Wow, that was 5.4 seconds. That's what you want at the end of the race. Uh oh, let's take a look and see where Newgarden comes out again. I don't think he has anything for his teammate Will Power, but maybe can he slot into second? There goes Power. Here comes Rossi. Newgarden stays in front for the moment, but Rossi has got a full steam ahead. Here he comes. We're watching on board for Newgarden. Rossi back to second or effectively second in the race. Marco Andretti has not made his final stop, so he's the leader for the moment. He's the last one that has not made that final stop. Look Kanan at Kanan. By, uh, Kanan makes the move, so now Newgarden is up to speed. He hasn't had the speed to stay with these front guys throughout the whole race, so hopefully he doesn't impede Dixon and, and keep him behind him for a while, but he really hasn't shown the speed over the long 20, 30 lap stint to be able to play with these guys up front. Still a big lead for, for, uh, for Power. He's still maintaining it about was, a three second lead. It was three seconds, Paul, but it's now down to two seconds. So Rossi just needs to clip into the draft off of Power, and I think he'll have a chance to close, but he's got this problem now. Tony Kanan wants to win Pocono. Tony Kanan fighting for his ride with Ganassi Race, and he wants to stay with these guys. There's other people that want him. He's one of the best drivers in the field. It's been a frustrating year for him, and this is a place where he would love to win another 500 miler. Are these guys better off working together and staying in line to try to catch up the willpower? How much does that matter? I think Tony Kanan is Tony absolutely flying. flying right flying. now. I don't think he wants to work with anybody except the checkered flag and be the first to work with it. Kanan gapped Rossi by nearly a second just on that lap. And he turned the fastest lap of the race a couple of laps ago at 218.325 miles per hour, trying to win for the first time in nearly three years. He's closing the gap. It's now down under one second, so or un under two seconds. Meanwhile, Marco Andretti is up front by 23 seconds but he's going to lose that advantage. It's about a 32 second loss when you make the final stop and Marco will be doing it soon and then Will Power will take over, but Kanan and Rossi might be coming. Stay with us for the finish from Pocono. Just over 10 laps remaining in this 500 mile race, the ABC Supply 500 IndyCar from Pocono. Marco Andretti remains the leader in his home state but he still needs to make one more pit stop. And Will Power is poised to take the advantage. But Joseph Newgarden has worked his way up to third position. He was languishing back in 14th not that long ago, but Joe New has been on a charge. That's Tony. Scott Dixon, I believe, defending to the inside on Pagano for sixth. Marco's going to do a fuel only, no tires, just a splash and go. So that's going to be a quick one here. He doesn't need a lot of fuel. Marco Andretti was hoping something might work his way there. He's going to cycle out probably around 8th or ninth, maybe 10th. I mean, that was seven yeah. seconds to take put, fuel only. Could have put tires on it. Yep. Guy, the fuel guy had trouble getting it in, so you almost could have taken tires. So he's going to end up at the tail end of this line. But right now, Power still hanging on to that advantage, but it is closing ever so slightly every lap. So Will Power back to the front after Andretti pits, but look at Joseph Newgarden charging. Newgarden is within about seven or eight car lengths. And Will Power has had no company for the last 25 laps. And remember what we said earlier, I think you want to be in second place for the last lap. And now Newgarden is well within the draft of Will Power. Yes, and what is so interesting is Will Power made his way to the front by having some extra downforce. He's been calling on the radio, I need to trim out, I need to trim out. Interestingly, Joseph Newgarden, who is behind him, has been struggling with too little downforce during the race, and they got to the point where they couldn't add any more. Now we get to the end, 
He's got some clear air. You've got two Penske cars with different downforce levels, and I think Joseph Newgarden might have just what he wants. I think Alexander Rossi, the closer we get to the finish, the stronger Rossi car gets at the end of the tire stint. I like where Rossi sits, too, in this shootout for the end. Well, he's right there. He's definitely going to make a move here. He's, he's been making late moves. Got a little bit of a fade job by Newgarden there, but they have now closed the gap to Will Power, so we got a three-car fight in the final nine laps to go. They've gapped the rest of the field. We've had 10 different leaders, a record 43 lead changes here at Pocono, and there might be another one coming. Will Power looked like he was in control, but Joseph Newgarden is within range, and Alexander Rossi is also in striking distance. I think Rossi's back there just kind of testing the line, testing the momentum, getting ready to plan out the run. It's Tony Kanaan back there in fourth. It's Simon Pagano in fifth. Scott Dixon, Elio Castroneves, Ryan hunter Ray, Graham Rahal, and Carlos Munoz, the top ten. Dixon has faded back to sixth after all this pit stop exchange, and now he's got an 18-point deficit to Joseph Newgarden. And remember, Newgarden has won the last two races, trying to win three in a row. And the last to win three in a row, still in his 20s, Scott Dixon back in 2007. The 26-year-old from Tennessee came into this weekend as the championship leader. As they run, he is once again the championship leader by 18 over Scott Dixon. But this, despite there only being seven laps to go, is oh. far from done. And power comes down to the bottom line, opening up to the top side for Newgarden. Not this time, but Newgarden is right there. And here comes Alexander Rossi. I'll bet Joseph Newgarden didn't see that coming. And remember, at Mid-Ohio, it was Newgarden who put an unexpected move on Will Power for the win there. I thought Power had a problem, well, but he was just anticipating a run from Newgarden and took the option away. A last lap break the draft at Indianapolis type move with six to go. So there's now, they are fighting like it's the last lap. That was a pretty crafty piece of driving. I don't think anybody, Newgarden, Rossi, or Kanan would have expected that. Watch this. Here comes Newgarden again. Power stays down low to defend. Newgarden tries to go high, not this time. So smart though, he's saying, Will Power is saying, if you want to pass me, you're going to have to go to the outside of turn three, and that is a tricky and treacherous move if you brave it. And he gapped him too, so if he can force Joseph Newgarden to take him on the outside of three, when you get this late in the race, you're going to delay your turn in and hang that guy out in the gray. Now, what does Joseph Newgarden do? That was the move he was working on. He has to completely recalibrate and figure out what, where's it going to come from? How do I get by by my teammate? You think Will Power watched that pass over and over at Mid-Ohio? He knows what the move's going to be? <laughs> left, left, right, left, right. Teammates, one and two for Team Penske. He's won nine IndyCar races here. Michael Andretti and his team has been the master of the 500-mile races. Alexander Rossi has not won this season in his second season after winning the Indianapolis 500 as a rookie. On board with Newgarden, running in second. That's Rossi right behind him. Tell you what, Rossi's got to make a move here pretty soon. I can't leave it to the last lap. We've got four to go, coming to three to go. So Rossi's got to try to get closer and get around Newgarden if he's got a chance. Two young American superstars running second and third. Newgarden, the championship leader coming in, chasing his teammate, the former champion, Will Power. Rossi's got a little bit of a run here. Okay, watch this. Newgarden's reset a bit on his approach. Now Rossi has a little run down the front straightaway. What does Newgarden do to defend? I think this is all a waiting game to the last lap. I think Newgarden's kind of backed off right now. He knows that he's got to make it happen on the last lap. So he, I think he might be content to let Power lead right now and just try it on the last lap. Pagano just got around Kanan for fourth. Let's see if he can chase down the front three and play as well. You know, I said that you don't want to be leading on the last lap. I'm having some hesitations after watching Power's move here to just take the option away. There he goes again, inside. Last, Back outside. Last lap, 214, 214, 214 for the top three guys. They're all running the same pace, but I like that move by Power. He's making sure that he has the last corner protected. After no one could keep anyone behind them all race long, this is masterful work by Will Power. All fair. He's not reacting. He is doing it. He's making the first move, so no issue there with what Will Power is doing. 
He's definitely Here comes breaking, Newgarden again. He's definitely breaking the draft. Newgarden pulls a tear off. He's got a clean visor, and he's close right now. He's close, but watch this. Power will do the same thing unless Newgarden can get there first. Power to the inside. He defends over the yellow line. Back up high. Joseph Newgarden must be so frustrated with this very clever defensive move. Power one here last year. As we come to the white flag, Joseph Newgarden trying to make it three wins in a row this season. Alexander Rossi is still there, and Pagano is within range back and forth. Through turn one. Pagano at a 216, he's closed that gap. I don't think he's got a shot, but he might get Rossi. But this is gonna be the key corner right here as we come to turn three. Newgarden is within range. Does he have a run for Will Power? Power comes down low to defend. Rossi thinking about the high side. Newgarden going high, trying to go over under. Can he get it done? Back on the main straightaway. Will Power is going to go back to back to win at Pocono and get back in the championship mix. Oh, He said it, what a race. And what a finish for Will Power. That was masterful defensive driving. He took the line and took every option that Joseph Newgarden had to try to pull anything off and played it to perfection. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. I didn't think anyone could keep someone that was quick behind them. How did Will Power do that? I'll tell you, for a guy that claims he never watches any of our broadcasts, he sure does watch a lot of film because he studied this one. That was a premeditated move. Will Power wins for the 32nd time in his career, moving ahead of Paul Tracy and Dario Franchitti. And he wins a great one here at Pocono. Brilliant drive for Will Power to win for the third time this season. And he's in victory lane at Pocono Raceway, winning his fifth career super speedway race, his sixth win on an oval, the second time in a row at Pocono Raceway. Will Power is the man today here at Pocono. Well, I think you were somewhat catching your breath there. First thing you said on the radio was, what a race. I've got to ask you about the finish and that move you were making. You knew that Joseph Newgarden had speed. Had you studied that in advance? Oh, no, I just knew if he got up the inside, that would be it. So uh, I was very, very uh, conscious of, of protecting the inside there. Um, yeah, he was very fast at the end. Uh, we kind of had to add a lot of downforce because we went to the back and went a lap down. So you had to try to get a good in traffic better. Oh man, what a, what a day, what a day. Got to thank Verizon, Chevy obviously, Chevy engine is uh, very, very quick and uh, man, I'm, I'm spent. That was a seriously uh, dramatic day, it was a lot of fun. I can tell you have that, that sort of fatigue that's setting in, but at the same time you've got all this joy because truly when you talk about that trouble, you were a lap down, you had damage on the front, you had damage on the rear, you must have been thinking, well this is definitely not going to be our day. I did not. I, I thought, like, just hang in here, just hang in here. Like, you know, I saw Hunter Ray got his lap back last year and got all the way back to third. And then I was very cautious on those restarts, just pick people off one by one and just be smart. You can never, never give up an IndyCar because you don't know what can happen. So uh, got a lap back and made it to the front. Now, you joke with me when I saw you after Toronto when things did not go well. We were going through the airport, and you had a plan. You said, yeah. I can win out. I can win this championship, and it's happening. Yeah, I remember I told you it'd be like second, first, first, second, or something like this. Yeah, well, it's going to keep pushing. Never give up. Never give up. That's, uh, that's, uh, that's what you always, always got to remember in this game. If you ever want to see an example of how much mental energy goes into a 500-mile race, you can just see that willpower is spent, even this kind of joy, just like, wow, what a relief. Kevin? Job well done. And as I mentioned, Will Power now ninth all-time on the IndyCar wins last, uh, passing a couple of notas, notables. PT, you're going to have to settle for 10th now. Oh, I know, but this guy is... Uh arguably one of the fastest guys ever to strap into an IndyCar. He's a, like a master of pole positions and a deserving champion.
Well, Joseph Newgarden didn't win today, but he backed up his last two wins with another second place result and maintains the championship advantage by 18 points, and he's with Robin Miller. Joseph, you just told me I don't think I had anything for Will, but he made a hell of a move to keep you behind him. You might have not have stayed there long, but he did a hell of a job. Uh, he, look, he, Will deserves the win here. He uh, he had the car to beat. You know, I think he was the class there in the second half of the race. Um, I could see it, and uh, I was trying to keep up with him. I, I was going to do everything I could to beat him, but at the same time, you know, I'm looking at where I'm stacked up. I'm sitting second, and Dixon's behind us, um, Elio's behind us, Simon's behind us. So from from a point standpoint. You don't want to wreck your teammate, and you don't want to give up where I'm at. So I, it was a great race for us. You know, congrats again to Will. It was a Team Penske victory, 1-2 for all of us. I can't be disappointed. I, I am disappointed for not winning, but I, I can't be disappointed with what we got from a point standpoint. Okay, you're still in the point lead. Was that fun racing? And did you did everybody just wait till the end to go? Because the guys were passing each other every lap, and then the last you know 20 laps, everybody kind of got position. Yeah, everyone was hauling butt at the end there. I mean, uh, you got that final restart and everyone was just going and what I mean by that is they were flat out they were going as fast as they could there was no fuel saving it was hard to pass people you know the the speed had turned up quite a bit so it got difficult and, and in that moment I was with Will in the back there and I could see he was so fast so I was trying to keep with him and we kind of cycled back with him to the front and from there I was like I don't even know if we're going to catch him so once we did catch him I was like I don't know if I'm going to be able to get by him but um, it was a crazy race you know it's a great day for Chevrolet they gave us the performance I think Will had the best Chevy today but man he he was a rocket ship and so we had everything we needed I, I hope the fans enjoyed it it was nerve-wracking from my side I was really on the edge of my seat and not not enjoying the looseness from the car <laughs> you still got the point lead with three to go brother yeah we gotta you know we gotta hang tough here is the thing you know I, I would have loved to have won that race I, I hate finishing second I think all of us do on the two car but you know it's in that it's in the family still it's a, it's a team Penske victory so we can't be disappointed with that I'm happy for Will he worked hard for it but I want to win the championship I think all of us do so we got to be smart about it thanks Joseph Katie this morning Alexander Rossi thought he was the car to beat today then just before the final stop you said guys I think we're too slow to win what changed oh nothing changed I mean the the fuel mixture knob came off about I don't know, two-thirds of the way through, so we didn't have full power there at the end. Um, and we know these Honda engines definitely definitely have something for the competition. The car, the military and motorsports car was great all day. The Napa know-how crew was stellar in pit lane. So, I mean, it's it's a, it's a really good result, but when you come away so close to a win, it's, it's sometimes difficult to swallow. But looking back at where we were at Pocono last year, um, we had a strong car and, and didn't finish. So it's come back to be on the podium is a testament to Andretti Autosport and, and the entire team and the work that they've done all year. You won your very first 500 mile race. Now in your fourth start, you almost won. What have you learned over those four 500 mile races? I'm getting more and more comfortable. And, and it, a lot of that is is because of the team. Um, you know, they've been amazing to work with. My teammates are are fantastic. And, and I can't go on enough about how much they've helped me get up to speed on these tracks that are that are very daunting for, for first comers. So, um, you know, just uh, very fortunate to be able to drive for this team and to have such a great group of people around me. Three races left this season. Can you get a win in 2017? Really hope so. I mean, I, we have a great group of people and we have the capability of doing it. Um, the competition's really strong and, and it requires perfection. So, like you said, we have three more opportunities and we'll do everything we can to make it happen. Focusing forward for Alexander Rossi. Kevin? And Katie, it's been a good run the last three races. Second, sixth, and third for Alexander Rossi. Will and Bo. And Elizabeth Power celebrating in Victory Lane. Don't forget more motorsports content coming up with Mika when we're done. Welcome back to Pocono Raceway, where Will Power has won a thrilling event today over Joseph Newgard. Back down to pit lane, Anders Krohn. And it was an absolutely crazy race. And Tony, we were talking about how strong you were in the opening stints, and then you just faded a little bit uh, towards the end. What happened there? Uh, we had a front wing broken, so uh, we don't know what happened and when it happened, but. When we stopped the car, the front wing was moving back and forth. So uh, I didn't know that until now. So that's probably what it was because we were so strong in the first part of the race. And I couldn't understand at the end. I was like, man, what's going on? But great battle. I mean, me and Graham, uh, that was awesome. I'm pretty sure my kids at home uh, got a kick out of that. So we got to lead some laps. Somebody just told me that uh, I led every race I've been here. This is, uh, <laughs> this is becoming my Indianapolis. I hope not. I hope it doesn't take 12 years for me to win it, but the NTT car was awesome. I mean, uh, unfortunately, those are the kind of things that happen. And uh, this is IndyCar, man. You know, sometimes you have a car to win and you have a little bit of a hiccup. You finish fifth. So uh, great day on and on. And uh, let's move on. Move on to St. Louis. Talk to me about that battle with Graham Rahal. I mean, just absolutely incredible to watch. What's your mindset there when you're when you're side by side with someone like that at over 220 miles an hour? Graham is a guy 
that, that I can trust. So uh, we knew that by doing that, we're actually helping each other to move forward and not to actually slow down and bring the people with us. So we, we used to do that in Indianapolis all the time, me and Dario, me and Dan at the time. And uh, this time it worked really well. He got what I was trying to do and he knew exactly what to do. And we, we kept moving forward and uh, it, it was awesome. And I think, uh, you know, I don't mind losing races like this. I think it was, uh, it was a lot of fun and uh, we can still show that the old guys you still got it. Great smile on Tony Kanan's face on the gateway next, Jan. And a smile from his teammate as well, Scott Dixon, who had a day that brought back six. You ran with Tony Kanan quite a bit. You led this race a lot. You had an early strategy pitting early, but you said downforce level at the end was a big issue. Yeah, I think maybe. I'm not sure. I think we maybe trimmed a little bit too much. Just couldn't stay flat in, in three, and I think it was kind of hindering the momentum. And it seemed like some of the other cars could run a little bit closer. But, uh, you know, good day at the start of the race. But obviously, you know, unless we win uh, at Chip Ganassi, we're, we're not too happy. But uh, fifth, sixth place for NTT Data, which is uh, something good to take home, something positive. But, um, you know, championship, we moved up a spot. But, uh, you know, unfortunately, the two car, you know, spread the lead a little bit there. So, um, you know, hopefully we can gain some points here shortly. Uh, especially before we get down to Sonoma. But that's 18 points. There's still a lot of points on the board, including double points in Sonoma. You always finish strongly. How do you rank, you know, where your team will be with this aero package now for the final races? Uh, I think, uh, you know, we, we know St. Louis is going to be a real tough one, uh, as we've seen from preseason testing. You know, it's it's got such long straights there that uh, the other aero kit just has a ton less drag, you know, much similar to what we saw at Phoenix. So it's definitely going to be uh, a get what you can at uh, at St. Louis, but, um, you know, hopefully we we can we can take something positive away from that and then finishing you know hopefully strong with Watkins Glen and, and Sonoma um, you know we'll just have to keep an eye on that uh, that point deficit right there but um, I don't know I think we've we've, we've definitely got a good swing coming and, and hopefully uh, we're gonna have a, a positive finish to the end of the season thank you Scott a lot to play for Katie Jan remember a vicious crash for Ryan Hunter Ray yesterday during qualifying he toughed it out race today 21st to 8th and even working your way to the lead Ryan just kind of have a blank stare on your face though how are you feeling uh, just beat um, you know it was it was it was a great run I mean we started with a lot of downforce right because we we're at the back so it took a while to kind of get the balance of the car we had no warm-up um, so it took a while to get the balance of the car aero balance and then and then getting the right downforce on it and then we started uh, slicing our way through it and I thought hey we really have something here you were leading at halfway and I thought it was going to be a good end to the race there. I'm not sure we got quite enough downforce out of it, though. And um, I was getting big runs on guys, just couldn't complete it. But really happy to uh, get back in the car today, put the effort forward, get a good good showing for DHL, for the fans out here. And, um, uh, you know, it was a test today. It was, it was a mental test, no doubt, um, physical one as well. But i um, glad to glad to roll it back in pit lane here and, um, and, and see all the guys with a smile on their face. So all in all, a good showing in the weekend, I think. Now that the adrenaline has worn off, how do you f feel compared to the green flag? I didn't sleep well at all last night, so I was just, I was really dragging my rear end around this morning um, and, and super stiff after the race, but it's all good. I'm a happy camper, you know, no broken bones or anything like that. Really very thankful, like I said before the race, um, to the safety of this car, the safety team that we have here, the best in the world. And, um, you know, uh, uh, the fact that I could race today is, is unreal. So uh, big thank you, and I uh, can't wait to get home to see my wife and, uh, and three boys. Ryan hunter Ray thanking everybody else, but I think we need to thank him for putting on a show for us today. Kevin? And it's going to be a tough stretch for a banged-up Ryan hunter Ray. Yeah, he didn't break any bones, but he's got a short oval coming up next week and then a road course of Watkins Glen following. Will Power celebrating here at Pocono. Welcome back to the ABC Pocono 500 post-race show. Look at the confetti, a big victory lane celebration. Simon Pagano has been there this year. But here's the amazing fact. He finished fourth today. We've had 14 races. He's been in the top five 12 times. In every other century I know of in IndyCar racing, you'd be the point leader. <laughs> well, thank you, Robin. Thank you, Robin. Uh, it was a long race, but uh, I actually had a lot of fun. I thought it was great racing. Um, you know, you really had to adjust the car the whole race. Very unfortunate at the end because we had a, we had a rocket and uh, we came back right on their tail. Uh, we we lost uh, we lost the pack basically uh, f battling with Dixon and it just cost me so much. Um, we're battling, 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 and sometimes you gotta give and take to make sure you don't lose the pack. We lost the pack and, and that was a real shame. But um, we had the pace to win the race, but unfortunately, um, just just a tick short. Uh, I think five more laps would have been interesting. 
I've asked a couple drivers, was it fun? It didn't look like it was contrived passing. It looked like you guys were pretty serious for 200 laps. Yeah, it was, uh, I, I, we didn't save much fuel on the, on the one car. We, uh, we, we worked on the, on, the, on the balance, you know, on the front wing, on the downforce level, and right at the end we found, uh, we found the hot ticket. So uh, we worked on it all day, um, and, and the DXC car finished pretty well. I'm, I'm satisfied. I think obviously you want to win, but uh, still uh, it's, it's a very good chance for the championship, and all you got to do is win Sonoma. Six or seven years ago, if you had finished fourth in an oval, you'd have been kissing the ground and going, this is unbelievable. Now you're a veteran. Now you like ovals. I do. I, I, I thought today that package for us drivers, I haven't seen the race yet. I watched it tomorrow. But uh, for us, for me, I felt like this was driving, a lot of driving, you know, very much on the edge, even though you can't really see it on TV. But really had to work your tools in the car, the bars, the weight jacker, and, and adjust the wings. And, and I think, you know, you have to be thinking about what you need to go faster. I think that's what a driver's skills should be like. So um, I enjoyed it. All right. I think he's 28 points behind Jan, but when he gets to Sonoma, all he's got to do is win the race. Yeah, still a lot of points to play. And certainly for Elio Castro Neves, kind of buried today. We didn't get to talk about you very much, uh, but not too bad from a point standpoint, finishing seven. But the very first thing you said was, Oh man, I should have changed something. What do you want to change? Well, we uh, would definitely uh, start conservative because <laughs> where we started and uh, everything happens in qualifying, you don't want something like that happen. All of a sudden, we made the jump from 20 to 10th right away, and we're like, wow, okay, so we'll just keep it. And uh, unfortunately, uh, turn three for me was the worst part, and I was really struggling there. The car was pushed and then loose, and it was really, really difficult. So after we made some changes uh, that we felt comfortable, Unfortunately, we're just the same as everybody else instead of just trying something different. But um, uh, obviously, we're batting for the championship with uh, Simon, uh, uh, Dixon, and, and New Garden. So we're right there with those guys. And all of a sudden, just towards the end, when we're still a little late, we made some change. The car was actually improved, but we just stayed there in the top 10. You know, I have to say that great team effort from everyone, especially my boys. I mean, to put the car together, the spare car. And I have to th thank as well the, the medical people because, like I said yesterday, uh, after the crash, an hour later, I was a big headache. They gave me some stuff. Man, I was ready to go. And um, I wouldn't be able to run today without those, um, th th that help. Okay, still a smile on his face, but don't forget the next race, it's a place that Castro Neves has climbed the fence before. Anders? Yeah, not the finish that Graham Rayall wanted to the race after running up near the front and in the lead. Graham, what, what happened there at the end? Well, you know, I mean, I think we just we, we just fell back a little bit there. You know, I think we we had a really good race car today. We were a little bit uh, too draggy, I think, on, on a downforce level. But uh, we just never were, were able to, uh, to get that wing out uh, during the pit stops, you know, to, to pick up a little speed. So, you know, unfortunately, as people saw in the one stop, uh, you know, right before, um, we lost a little bit of time, then we came in and we came out in the middle of a group and just got freight train. And, and after that, it was all about trying to recover. But, you know, I was obviously pleased with, with the pace. I think uh, everybody, uh, you know, did a great job on the number 15 team today. Uh, you know, strategy, we'll, we'll go back and review that and see where we could have been better and stuff like that. But, you know, our, our team has worked awfully hard. And we had a car that was, that was capable of running certainly in the top three. I don't know that I had even Rossi's pace. He would have struggled to get by us, but I think he was a little bit quicker. You know, same with a couple other guys, but when, when we were up front with TK, you know, if that train could have kept just working and swapping lap to lap to lap, I would have been perfectly cool with that. But, uh, you know, sometimes that's not the way these things go. All right, Graham Rahal, not too happy with that finish, but looking forward to Gateway next weekend. Kev? Landers, there are so many that can leave this 500 mile race thinking they legitimately had a chance to win this one. It was a good one. Final thoughts from Paul Tracy and Townsend Bell coming up. Stay with us from Pocono. Well, if you enjoyed this one today from Pocono, more oval racing coming up next Saturday night. IndyCar goes back to the St. Louis area. Gateway Motorsports Park. Hope you can join us 9 o'clock Eastern for the Bomberito Auto Group, uh, Automotive Group 500. They have done fantastic work upgrading that facility in the last few years, including a recent repave, and we think Indy cars will race well there. That's the winning car from today, the number 12 Verizon for Will Power, and this is how the championship stands. Still pretty much status quo is what it's been all year long. It's been those Penske's and that one Dixon character, so it's all going to come down to the last race, Townsend. I really like the way that Alexander Rossi, though, his 
brought on a strong March here, second half of the season. Think about all of the silly season rumors and rides potentially opening up. I think he's a driver everybody has their eye on, even more so after today. And he is on a roll here recently. Also note Simon Pagano has finished every lap this season. Can Will Power win his seconds? I think he's going to have to continue that role. I mean, he just did a masterful job today. I think it'll be fascinating to watch what he does with his teammate Newgarden down the stretch. What will we see at Gateway next Saturday night, Paul? Well, I think you're going to see another barn burner. Uh, it's going to be downforce and drag is going to be critical. There might be some fuel mileage at play there, but that race is uh, it's a it's a crapshoot who can win. But you know, look at Will Power. It's now. Uh, he, cause he's a guy that can get on a streak and maybe in the next three or four races pull up, pull them all off. Very impressed with Ryan Hunter Ray. Thought he might have a chance to win from the hospital bed. Still a good result today and a fun race. Thank you, PT. Thank you, Townsend. We'll see you next Saturday night. Now, meanwhile, coming up next, it's Meekum Auto Auctions from Monterey. Scott Oak and the gang, including F1 on NBC, Steve Matchett are there. Be sure to join us next Saturday night at 9 o'clock Eastern for the Bomberito Automotive Group 500 from Gateway Motorsports Park near St. Louis. For Townsend Bell, Paul Tracy, Jan Bikas, Katie Hargan, Robin Miller, and Anders Krohn, I'm Kevin Lee. What a win. Congratulations to Will Power. Wins the 500-mile race at Pocono.